time for an offensive onslaught here in Columbia, Missouri, as two of college football's most prolific and dynamic offenses take the field. The stars, Chase Daniel, Mizzou's Heisman hopeful, Jeremy Macklin, their irrepressible and indomitable multi-threat factor, and Oklahoma State's fantastic quarterback, Zach Robinson. Both offenses averaging more than 50 points a game. It's going to be a track meet on grass. Oklahoma State, Missouri, right now. Welcome everyone under the lights at Faroe Field in Columbia, Missouri. Oklahoma State number 17 against number three, the Missouri Tigers. Five of the last six games between these two crews have been decided by a touchdown or less. Hello everybody, I'm Mark Jones along with Bob Davey. Aaron Andrews is down on the field joining us in just a few moments. Bob, already it has been a very intriguing, compelling day in college football. Number one Oklahoma losing earlier today against Texas. That presents Missouri with a great opportunity to perhaps move into the number one spot with a win. Well, Mark, that was a great game in Dallas today and it just made tonight's game that much bigger because if Missouri can win tonight, tomorrow morning they may wake up and be the number one team in the country. These two teams on the field tonight both averaging right around 53 points a game you're a former defensive coordinator they got to be running for the hills at the side of these offenses can you imagine after five games in this football season Missouri's averaging 53 points a game Oklahoma State 52 I mean that's crazy and the interesting thing is they're both spread no huddled offenses but they're completely different Missouri loves to throw it the third in the nation in pass offense Oklahoma State on the other hand they love to run the ball they're second in the nation in rushing offense but the bottom line mark the reason they score so many points great playmakers at the skill positions at quarterback Chase Daniel probably the leader right now in the Heisman race percentage wise 76 percent of his compl passes completed Zach Robinson probably overshadowed in the Big 12 a little bit because of all the quarterbacks but last year he had 850 yards rushing 2800 passing at running back Derek Washington averages 100 yards a game Kendall Hunter 141 for Oklahoma State maybe two of the best young wide receivers in the country and Jeremy Macklin and Des Bryant only sophomores they do it all they catch passes they return kicks at tight enders weapons Chase Kaufman for Missouri really plays like a wide receiver he's their leading receiver statistically and bad news for for Oklahoma State, Brandon Pettigrew, probably an NFL first-round pick, will not play for the Cowboys tonight. But, Mark, these fans are ready for a <laughs> shootout. It'll probably be 10-7, a defensive game, when all the dust settles. I would try and hope and bet against that. You know, if college football really is, in part, a beauty contest, this is the talent portion of the competition. Here's what's happened within some of the top-ranked teams today. Oklahoma, as I mentioned, losing today against Texas, Alabama, with the week off Missouri with a great opportunity and for more on a day rife with opportunities here's Aaron Andrews well Mark both teams obviously watching that huge game today against Oklahoma and Texas and both teams handling the outcome quite differently I talked to Oklahoma State what their coaches did as soon as Texas beat Oklahoma they took their players cell phones and they made them put them away in their bags they didn't want the players getting any text messages from their friends saying hey this is a big game they also made them stay away from the television they didn't want to hear any of the post game hype and how big this game is for Missouri now on Missouri's side of things Chase Daniel I talked to him I said hey did you talk to your players about it he said we don't have to we watch the game we know how huge this is for us tonight all right Aaron and Oklahoma State winning the toss deferring to the second half here's Jeremy Macklin one of the most productive kickoff returners in the nation brought down at the 16 yard line and let's take a look at the impact players first of all for Missouri Chase Daniel wearing number 25 today. That to commemorate his fallen teammate from 2005. Aaron O'Neill will tell you more about that a little bit later. Derek Washington, one of the leading rushers in the nation. And Jeremy Macklin, one of the most dangerous punt returners and kickoff returners and receivers and rushers in the country as well. First down and 10 from their own 16-yard line. Daniel to pass. And Daniel lunging forward near the 26-yard line for the first down, or at least close to it, depending on the spot. 
We take a look at the starters on the top part of your screen. You saw Chase Daniel run a few moments ago, completing an astonishing 76% of his passes, 15 touchdown passes on the season versus just one interception. Mark, here's what you're going to see a lot of. That's not a running back back there. That's Chase Daniel, five wide receiver, empty look. Now they motion the running back, Derek Washington, back in. On second down and one. Washington going to be stopped up for a loss on the play back near the 20-yard line. Jeremiah Price, former junior college player from Mississippi with a couple of sacks coming into the game, making the play for the Cowpokes. Some amazing, amazing offensive statistics from Missouri, but one to watch here in the first possession. They've scored the first possession of every game this year. And they have never, Bob, had a three and out offensively in their five games this season. Third and five. Daniel back to pass. And what a catch by Chase Kaufman and a flag on the play. Wow. A 21-yard pickup if it stands for Chase Kaufman. A big target at 6'6". Pass interference, number 26 of the defense. A penalty is declined. First down. Well, we said in the open that Chase Kaufman plays like a wide receiver. Watch this catch. One hand catch. I mean, he has 53 catches on the season. And you talk about matchup problems. I mean, that's a six, seven wide receiver out there lined up. Yeah, I saw him down in the field before the game, and he is, Bob, all of six foot seven. His dad, Paul, a former NFL Pro Bowl, really. And Chase telling me a little bit earlier that. Uh, his dad, the biggest thing, the most important thing that he taught him was how to catch the ball with his hands and not his body. And uh, you saw an example of it there on the last reception. You see how deep Chase Daniel is in this shotgun. I and mean, that's at least a yard deeper than any other quarterback in college football. We'll talk about that throughout the course of this night. That pass complete to number 24, Derek Washington, a good receiver out of the backfield. And he picks up another Tiger first down. Bob, what does it do for Chase Daniel being back that extra yard in the pocket? Well, Mark, it does two things. One, and this sounds a little bizarre, but in the running game, it times it out where the running back doesn't get to the line of scrimmage too quickly. The second thing in the passing game, it allows those receivers to run a little bit deeper route. And the third thing, if he's deeper, it takes longer to get to him as far as pass rush. First down and 10. Little receiver screen complete. Number 84, that's Tommy Saunders. The six-foot senior picks up eight yards. They really like to spread it around to a host of receivers. Saunders, Macklin, Perry, Washington out of the backfield. A very balanced passing attack. And what it does, it challenges this defense both mentally and physically. I mean, they're just constantly on the go. They run it. Daniel. Keeps it himself. Wow. We don't see that too often. Chase Daniel showing his ability to accelerate. Picks up 23. Well, Zach Robinson is supposed to be the running quarterback. He plays for Oklahoma State. Maybe it's that number 25 he's wearing, but obviously at 225 pounds, Chase Daniel makes it even more difficult for the defense to defend him. First down and 10 in a hurry at the 15-yard line of Oklahoma State. Daniel passes complete. That's Kaufman fighting his way close to another first down for Missouri. But already look at Oklahoma State's defensive players already under duress and we have 12 minutes and eight seconds left in the first quarter but I can't emphasize enough mentally because it's constantly going against no huddle and physically because of the tempo of the game it is tough on the defense they're already back on their heels first and goal from the five yard line for Missouri. Washington stopped up behind the line of scrimmage for a loss of about two on the play. Derek Washington leading the nation in scoring. And remember that Missouri, if you don't already know, have scored on its first possession of all five games so far they've played this year. It's so important early in this game for Oklahoma State. 
They are a running team. Oklahoma State second in the nation in rush offense. You do not want to fall behind early in the game because they have a tendency to come out of their game plan if they can't run it. And now uh, Missouri showing pass four receivers out to the right of Daniel and now they motion one in little receiver screen to Kaufman Kaufman stopped up short of the end zone at about the one yard line no signal coming from the official actually he's about two feet short of that end zone again the wide receiver slash tight end screen big Kaufman's going to stretch it out that may be reviewed right there I do think the knee was down Kind of hand walked into the end zone. One Third the, down and goal. One of the problems always in the spread is short yardage offense. Yeah. I think they are going to take a look yeah. at this. Is it just me, Bob? Or we've seen a bunch of those today. Plays that were reviewed, really scoring type plays. Exactly. Saw one in the Oklahoma Texas game. And we saw one at the end of the North Carolina Notre Dame game there at the end of the at the end of the game in Chapel Hill. But. Let's take another look at it again. I mean, did the ball extend through the plane of the goal line? Right there, the knees down. I think that was a good call. Now, they may look and spot it a little bit closer. I think he was down prior to the ball crossing the plane. Wow. I do not think this will be overturned. But did, Dave Christensen, the offensive coordinator, telling us a little bit earlier this season when we saw Missouri against Illinois that Kaufman is as good as there is in the country at his position and he's been a favorite target of Chase Daniel for so far. So many weapons. I mean you look at the balance in the receiving stats for Missouri. You know Chase Kaufman came in with 33 catches. You have Jeremy Macklin at 31 catches. Tommy Sanders at 22. As a look at uh, Gary Pinkle, the head coach of Missouri, came into this game uh, cautiously optimistic and not as enthusiastic as you might think. Uh, he had that, that worrisome, furrowed brow that all coaches have. Uh, Pinkle saying that, uh, I just want us to play well, and he left it at that. After review, play on the field is confirmed. Third down. Third and goal coming up. Pinkle, the co Big 12 coach of the year a season ago, and Mike Gundy on the other side of the field. Interesting, Mike Gundy calls all the offensive plays. They have co-coordinators, but he's thinking right now, okay, if they do score, what am I going to call? I have to remain patient. What am I going to do offensively when we get the ball back? Derek Washington on the direct snap. They're going to blow it dead, though, before the play. As Chase Daniel lined up to the bottom of your screen as a receiver. Prior to the snap, offsides, number 92 of the defense. He made contact. Third down. That direct snap's becoming very popular, Bob, in well, football again. It really is, and obviously Oklahoma State is going to jump across the neutral zone right there but yeah you have to become creative in the spread at some point though I still like the quarterback going <laughs> under center and just handing the ball off on they the do that line. still <laughs> <laughs> there goes Chase Daniel in motion again. third and goal here's Washington gonna try it again Washington no signal stopped up short of the end zone and it's gonna be fourth down and goal as he took the direct snap again and once again unable to get into the end zone what do you do here? Do you go for it or do you send in your place kicker? Well, it looks like he's sending out the field goal team, which is a bit of a surprise, but let's look at it from Gary Pinkle's viewpoint. They are not a great short yardage offense. They usually score from a long distance out, so get the three right now. Jeff Wolfert attempting this field goal from 18 yards out. He has been extremely accurate throughout the course of his career. Chase Daniel once again keeping their record intact. They've scored on every opening drive so far this season. Back at Memorial Stadium for O Field. 3-0 the Tigers over the Cowboys just underway here in the first quarter. 
Jeff Wolford has just marked a new school record, broken the Missouri career scoring record, passing Brad Smith on that last field goal. You know, sometimes you have good fortune as a coach. Gary Pinkle was sitting in his office, and Wolford came walking in. He was a diver on the swimming and diving team and wanted to walk on in football. And that's worked out well for Gary Pinkle in Missouri. Sure has. Here's Des Bryant on the kickoff return back with Parrish Cox, and Cox takes it out close to the 30 yard line. Let's take a look at the impact players for Oklahoma State. The quote unquote other quarterback in this game, by the way, Zach Robinson, pretty good 72% completion rate, 10 touchdown passes, and three interceptions. A good runner as well. Kendall Hunter, speaking of good runners, a year ago didn't get much burn or playing time. This year, really lighting it up. And Des Bryant, one of just two players in the nation that has a couple of punt returns for a touchdown so far this year and a very dangerous wide receiver. First down and 10, Oklahoma State's first possession of the ball game from their own 29. Completion at the 36-yard line to Des Bryant. As we take a look at the starters for Oklahoma State, Des guys bumping their gums a little bit on the sidelines already. Well, that's a good-looking receiver right there. Maybe the best jump ball receiver in the country. If you had to say what Oklahoma State is, they're a look offense. You'll watch them look over to the sidelines an awful lot, get the play signaled down from the press box. Robinson back to pass on second down, completes it over the middle at the 44. Ball loose. And the Tigers say they have it. William Moore was there, and they're going to rule it incomplete. A big lick by Castine Bridges. Number 21, the junior college corner, comes in right there and puts his nose right on that football. Looked like he made the catch, Bob, and went to step with it. William Moore there, the starting strong safety to jump on the loose ball. Third and two coming up for the Cowboys. Robinson looking over to the sideline for the play. Both these teams' respective defense is going to be under the spotlight. Here's Robinson, a prolific runner, tiptoes out of bounds at the 40 to get the Oklahoma State first down. He picked up three on the play. And Zach Robinson. He's a runner now. He run, he probably runs mark four or five. He's from Colorado. 15 yards passing as a senior in high school, a thousand yards rushing as a junior. He got 39 passes as a wide receiver, so he was very athletic. Little play fake here, Robinson, going up top has Des Bryant wide open. It hangs up, and it's incomplete. And Bryant is shaken up on the play. Ricks and Garrett back there to break it up. And Des Bryant can't get up off the turf here at 4 0 Field. You know, the Cowboys are already missing Brandon Pettigrew, their All American tight end, who is a major part. There he is on the sidelines of their receiving game, their passing game. One more look at how Bryant was shaken up. Oh, just a lick by Justin Garrett. The safety came up under the chin and got him. Time out on the field. It'll be second down and 10 when we come back. Missouri leading by a field goal three to nothing a few moments ago. Des Bryant number one right there for Oklahoma State shaken up on this play. Helmet to helmet or not Bob. I don't think so. I mean, the top of that helmet grazed that chin. I can see why Mike Gundy's upset, but I, I think that's a good no call. Close, though. Very close. 8.34 to go here in the first quarter. Robinson fires a completion on the Tiger side of midfield at the 46. Let's go downstairs to Aaron Andrews. Mark, as we just saw, the training staff looking at Des Bryant, and, and what I can tell, they're doing the concussion test as you see him putting his helmet on and asking him what play was that. Describe the play. Do you remember the play? He said something funny because everybody started laughing, so looks like he may be coming back in at some point. All right, Aaron, this pass complete again. 
number 85. That's Damian Davis. You know, interesting. You work on tendencies all week as coaches. Throw those tendencies out the window. I mean, that is six straight passes <laughs> called by Mike Gundy in Oklahoma State tonight. We thought this was a running spread offense. They run it on this play between the tackles down to the 33-yard line. Kendall Hunter with his first touch of the ball game. He has eight rushing touchdowns on the season. A quiet type, but uh, his game doing a lot of talking so far this year. Picks up nine on the play. Under eight minutes to go. Robinson hands it off to Hunter again. Nice cutback. Kendall Hunter across the 30 down to the 29-yard line for the Cowboys. We came into this game knowing there's two prolific offenses. Both defenses categorized a little bit as the Achilles heel of their football team. And right now, neither defense can stop the other offense. Second and five coming up for Oklahoma State. Here's what we mean by look offense. <laughs> That's what you call looking over to that sideline to get some help on the play call now. stopped up behind the line of scrimmage. I think they looked over one too many yeah. times. But that's the play they checked it. Yeah, Missouri had a good beat on that one. And uh, meanwhile, Des Bryant coming back onto the field. That's a good sign for the Cowboys. He is their most productive receiver so far this season. The 10th play of the Cowboy drive coming up. And there's a look at the distribution so far. Third down and six. This is usually Des Bryant time. He's at the bottom of your screen. Number one. That pass is ruled complete to the aforementioned Des Bryant for the first down. So once again, making his impact known, he picked up seven working against Carl Geddes. Both these defenses really under the spotlight, Bob. That's the difference maker in this game, isn't I, it? I think so. And I look at it psychologically like it's the defense versus the other defense. You know, if Oklahoma State gets a stop, then you have to get a stop if you're Missouri's defense. First down and 10 from the 23 for Oklahoma State. And you know, Oklahoma State got a stop. They held them to three points on that first drive, so you have to match them if you're Missouri's defense right here. Robinson on the play fake has a man in the end zone and it's incomplete intended for Davis broken up by William Moore aka Willie Moe the 6 1 senior safety who's back for the second consecutive week he was shaken up earlier this season with a foot injury he's one of the key cogs back there in the secondary well here's what the spread does you have William Moore a safety at 225 pounds locked on a wide receiver. That is the beauty and also the difficulty defensively against the spread. Those safeties have to play like corners. Second and 10 coming up. Tigers with a little bit of heat into the end zone. A little bit of bumping and grinding going on as Des Bryant went up for it. And there's a flag thrown on the play. Carl Geddes back there defending once again. We saw this Missouri secondary in the first game of the season against Illinois. And Juice Williams, later in the game, kind of had his way with Pass them. Pass interference, number 19 of the defense. 15 yard penalty. It is first down. Let's go back to Wendy Nix in the studio. A prime time pulse, an idea of what's going on around our family of networks over on ABC. It's the Bank of America 500 under the lights. Penn State, Wisconsin on ESPN. 3 0 Nittany Lions over the Badgers. Boy, what about Wisconsin? They could go 0 3 in the Big Ten. You have to be impressed with the game plan from Mike Gundy mm -hmm. in Oklahoma State. You're talking about coming out here with total confidence in Zach Robinson and throwing the football because, as you mentioned, Illinois exploited Missouri's pass defense in the first game. Juice Williams, 451 yards passing in that football game. Yeah. And Zach Robinson steps back and calls a timeout. Keep in mind, the last time the Cowboys played here at Faro Field, they came away with a victory. Back after this.
ESPN's College Football Primetime. Brought to you by OnStar by GM. To learn more, visit OnStar.com. Getting the face paint on Missouri, leading three to nothing. The Tiger defense is spending a lot of time on the field this year, Bob. Time of possession. Well, you look for the season. We'll come to that graphic after this play, but time of possession. I used to be a big believer in that old school philosophy, keep the ball. I'm not so sure I believe in the significance of time of possession anymore. Now the myth is being debunked. First and goal. This is Tostin. And Tostin is stopped up after a gain of about two yards. Mark, we talked about time of possession. Missouri, 118th in the country in time of possession. Oklahoma State, 10th. But let me explain that. People might get nervous. 118th time of possession. It doesn't matter if you score with the ball. That does not matter, time of possession, if you score. Now, if you don't score or you turn it over if you're Missouri and you give it right back to the other team, then it matters. Uh, so that stat is a little bit overrated. That's 118 out of 119 teams in time of possession. The 13th play of the Oklahoma State drive coming up. Their first of the ball game, second and goal. Robinson hands it off to Hunter. No, he keeps it himself. Touchdown. He sold the fake and the Cowboys score. Thirteen methodical, efficient plays down the field later. The Cowboys take a 6-3 lead. Well, everybody knows the read zone. And Zach Robinson, that's stealing right there as Missouri pinched on the weak side, pinched the defensive lineman down inside. He just kept the football outside, no contain. How about that drive on Impressive. the road in Columbia, Missouri? That's his fifth rushing touchdown of the season for Zach Robinson. And it's not like Missouri is used to trailing on the season. They've trailed. Well, we'll tell you how much on the other side. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Seven to three, Oklahoma State with the lead. 4.53 to go in the first quarter. Mark that down on your calendar. We'll tell you why in a moment. This is Jeremy Macklin. And he's brought down at the 23-yard line. Let's go downstairs to Aaron. Mark, I had a chance to observe the Cowboys' defense while the offense was on the field. And I got to tell you, every time the offense would move the ball, the defense would move away from the bench. They would get so excited that they'd start to walk out on the sideline and watch the game. The coaches over here, very upset with them, pulling them over, saying, come on, we got to talk about scheme and play over here. They were so excited for their offense, guys. Yeah, Aaron, they feel that they have something to prove in this game against Missouri. Missouri trailing seven to three. The operative word there is trailing. Chase Daniel trying to change that here. And it's incomplete at the 37 yard line. Now we talked about the rarity of them being behind. They've trailed for a total of now just 30 seconds on the entire season. It was 13 seconds coming into this game. That was against Illinois, all 13 of those seconds until Macklin ran back a kickoff to quickly turn the scoreboard around. Jimmy Jackson in the ball game for the Tigers. Second down and 10. That's Macklin in motion. They'll give him the ball in many different ways. He gets it here with nowhere to go. He stopped up at the 20. I look at this game as a tremendous opportunity for one of these defenses. If either one of these defenses can play respectively well tonight, everyone in the country will be talking about it. I'm serious. For Oklahoma State, this is a tremendous opportunity as we look at Tim Beckman, their defensive coordinator, who is really a good coach. Came from Ohio State, spent time at Bowling Green with Urban Meyer. This could be a night of first. It's third and 13. Remember that Missouri has yet to have a three and out this year. And you know Oklahoma State's defensive players know that statistic you just gave. Yeah, they got cable and ESPN too. Daniel keeps the streak alive. What a catch by Jeremy Mack. No, they're ruling it incomplete. They're ruling it incomplete. And the streak is, is done. broken. Great effort by number 17, Jacob Lacey, the corner, knocking that football out of there. And I bet if we went to Aaron Andrews right now, she'll tell you how excited that Oklahoma State defense is because that's the first three and out this season for Missouri. That's one to mark down on the uh, grades when they give them out on Sunday when they look at the game tape. You know, they've only punted twice in the last three games, and they have a new snapper. 
They have a punter? <laughs> Des Bryant back deep. He just hit a three iron down that field. All the way back at the 35. And Brian is stopped up at his 35 yard line. Let's go back to Wendy in the studio. Mark, thank you very much. Sports Center right now. How about LSU at Florida? Big game in the swamp. Tim Tebow's pass tip right here. But Percy Harvin pulls it in anyway, right on into the end zone. He will go. A 70 yard touchdown reception. Florida up 10 0. Meanwhile, game two of the ALCS finds the Red Sox over the race. 2 0. Sox with a one game lead in this series. Already, Mark. All right, Wendy. First down and ten for the Cowboys from their own 33-yard line. Robinson given plenty of time. It's batted at the line of scrimmage, incomplete. Baston got one of those paws up to knock it down. Well, this week on Monday Night Football, Eli Manning, Brandon Jacobs, and the undefeated Giants head to Cleveland to take on the Browns. How will the Browns fare against the defending Super Bowl champs at home? Monday Night Football, ESPN, 8.30 Eastern coverage beginning at 7 Eastern with Monday Night Countdown delivered by UPS. Oh, what a move between the tackles and a first down out to the 46-yard line by Kendall Hunter. Hunter leading the Big 12 on rushing yards per game coming in. He picks up 13 there. And height is not an issue. They call this guy Spud, probably for Spud Webb because he's not very tall. But, you know, Mike Gundy played with Barry Sanders when Mike Gundy played at Oklahoma State back in the late 80s. And even in recruiting, height is not a factor. <laughs> Just five foot eight, sophomore that didn't get a lot of playing time last year, and we have an official injured down on the field at the 44 yard I'll tell line. Tell you what, not to make light of that, that reminds me of you yesterday uh -oh. when you had that calf injury <laughs> that I heard all day yesterday about how you pulled that calf. Just looking for a little sympathy and love, <laughs> man. <laughs> 40 minutes on the treadmill will do it. We can only hope that our official down on the field will be able to continue. We talked about Mike Gundy tight with Barry Sanders. And uh, when you start talking about comparing Hunter and Sanders, not sure if we're ready to get to that point yet, but uh, <laughs> always a great opportunity to look and watch Barry Sanders highlights. And I can remember the story of scouts going down to watch Thurman Thomas when Thurman Thomas was at Oklahoma State. And they said, boy, we hope that he doesn't do much because that other guy behind him, Barry Sanders, is really good. Well, I was actually coaching in a couple of those games you just saw right there. I wasn't going to really admit that. But when I was at Texas A&M, we went up there in 1988. And, you know, Mike Gundy was the quarterback, starting quarterback four years at Oklahoma State. Mike Gundy holds all their passing records. So you came clean on coaching against uh, him in that game that tape was on our production meeting. I was surprised at how frank and honest you were there. What do you mean you're surprised? <laughs> First down and ten. Robinson, the other quarterback in this matchup. I mean, that's still different to me. Everybody looking over at that sideline is getting those signals. And for one of the few times tonight, Robinson under the center. Kendall Hunter got a nice block from Zach Robinson, his quarterback. And Zach had his back on that one. And Hunter gets down to the 45-yard line. You can see why he's averaging 141 yards a game, Kendall Hunter. Young guy from East Texas, like so many of these Oklahoma State players, wasn't highly recruited. Iowa State, Kansas State, Baylor. They run it again. That's Hunter once again, gets the first down. And uh, it's interesting when we ask the coaching staff about Hunter's demeanor. Uh, the coach is saying, man, he is, he's 50 beats a minute. He is extremely laid back. If he were any more laid back, he'd be sleeping. Out of Tyler, Texas, 60 players on this Oklahoma State roster from the state of Texas. Keith Toaston in the ball game now. Hunter getting a breather. And who would have ever thought coming into this game that Oklahoma State would mix it up as much as they have so far, especially throwing the ball as effectively as they have. Two and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. Toaston. Beside Robinson gets the handoff. And got about two on the play. Let's go downstairs to Aaron. Mark, you mentioned what a cool customer Kendall Hunter is. 
how about the fact he takes a nap minutes before the game? He says he just likes to doze off a little bit. It helps him cool down. Mike Gunny, the head coach of Oklahoma State, said uh, he's going to live a long time. The chances of him dying of a heart attack aren't very good. Yeah, but guys that do that, that causes the coaches to have a heart attack. That's scary. That always made me nervous. <laughs> a half hour before the game, and you got a guy in there snoring in the locker room. That doesn't send out a great <laughs> message. <laughs> so what you do is you hide him. You tell him to go somewhere else and get his sleep in. <laughs> The play fake Robinson fires a dart complete at the 30 yard line. Des Bryant has a first down working against Castine Bridges. We talked about Hunter. He already this year has four 100 yard rushing games and has run the ball well tonight so far. Well, and just a young skill position football team. I mean, Kendall Hunter only a sophomore, Des Bryant only a sophomore. I mean, that may be the best one two sophomore punch in the country now at skill, the skill positions. He's looking up at Oklahoma State. First down and ten. Toaston back in the ball game. The tailback. Robinson. The throwback complete. Nice move by the tight end. And they pick up another first down. That's one of number the, 88, Jamal Mosley with the catch, picking up 13. One of the toughest things to defend. Watch this tight end. He's going to run a crossing route. The quarterback, Zach Robinson, is going to roll this way. So kind of a misdirection pass. Very tough to defend. Hunter this time gets about three or four yards on the play. Oklahoma State continuing to just eat up that clock. Under a minute to go here in the first quarter. You know, Oklahoma State, 55 points or more in four straight games. They've got their share of statistics, too, on offense. Well, you get the feeling that they came into this game with a little bit of a chip on their shoulders, sensing that Missouri was receiving the majority of the hype coming in. Yeah, I agree 100% with that. Second down and seven. Hunter. Bouncing it outside, but dragged down nicely on the edge by number four, Hardy Ricks. And I think he brought up a great point there. You know, Missouri, with all the attention, you know, Oklahoma State's won seven of their last eight games. Zach Robinson, Des Bryant, Kendall Hunter, they have the same kind of skill players that Missouri has, just nobody's really heard of them. So what a great coming out party in a game like this tonight on national television. They've scored over 50 points in four consecutive games, a school record for Mike Gundy, their head coach. That's the end of the first quarter. Back after this. at Farrow Field. I'm Mark Jones along with Bob Davey, Aaron Andrews down in the field. Oklahoma State surprising Missouri so far, leading 7-3 and threatening to score once again on third down and four here. Kendall Hunter, the lone back beside quarterback Zach Robinson. Little jailbreak screen. It's not enough. Des Bryant got back to the line of scrimmage brought down by Justin Garrett. And fourth down coming up for the Cowboys. In comes the field goal unit led by Dan Bailey. Well, Justin Garrett having a nice night so far at safety. Junior college player out of Pasadena, number eight, Justin Garrett. Bailey, five of seven on the season, along of 27. The amount of points they put on the board, it's not like he's kicked a lot. Well, if you hold either one of these offenses to a field goal, <laughs> I consider it a win for the defense. Wow, it was ugly and no good. A knuckleball coming off of his foot. Not sure whether that was tipped at the line of scrimmage or not. But it's no good. One more look. I think he just missed it. That's his first miss under 30 yards in his career. And a blown opportunity for the Cowboys. See what Chase Daniel can do once again wearing that number 25 commemorating his former fallen teammate. Aaron O'Neill, who passed away in July of 2005 during a 
preseason workout. This one almost picked off at the 23 yard line by Ori Lemon. One of the real vocal leaders on that Cowboys defensive unit. Mark, that would have been a huge, obviously a huge play for Oklahoma State. Ori Lemon breaking in front of that football. That'd be second down and 10 coming up. Another empty formation by the Tigers. Daniel completes it on the far side of the field. That's Tommy Saunders making the catch. And he picked up 11 for the first down. Did a nice job of running after the catch. And run after the catch. Such a big part of playing defense. Eliminating run after the catch yards defensively is really key to playing against these spread offenses out there in the open field. There's Macklin in motion. The game is to Washington. And Washington brought down to the 34-yard line. Let's go back to Wendy in the studio. Mark, thank you very much. A check on LSU and Florida at the Swamp. What's got into the Gators? How about Tim Tebow and Percy Harvin connecting for the second time of the night? Florida out in front 17-0. That's still in the first quarter. And Arkansas knocking off Auburn today 25-22. Boy, Auburn with uh, Tony Franklin now departed, trying to get that offense going. Here's Chase Daniel. Another nice run and sliding in at the 20, actually the 48 yard line. Safe. And a pick of a 12. Normally, Chase Daniel looks to throw off the scramble, but tonight, taking more of an active role and just gaining yardage off the scramble running. Coming into the night, the leader in the Heisman candidacy, Big 12 Offensive Player of the Year a season ago, and the first ever Heisman finalist in Missouri school history. Daniel with plenty of time, dumps it off incomplete, intended for Saunders again at midfield. I don't know that I've ever seen a quarterback in the pocket, particularly an empty with no running back back there to help in pass protection, as cool as Chase Daniel is in that pocket. I mean, he just stands there flat-footed. I mean, he's been in this offense, obviously, all through high school, but he is a cool customer now. now he's run the ball three times for 44 yards tonight. Second and 10 coming up. Washington now sits beside Daniel. It's all out blitz, and they see man-to-man -man coverage. Daniel has a man on the post, and it's batted away incomplete at the 19-yard line intended for Denario Alexander. That was a tremendous play by Parrish Cox, who's been a little inconsistent. A guy that Missouri thought they would go after a little bit. That was a great play of just staying with it and using that left hand to strip that football out of there. Great concentration by the corner, Parrish Cox. Well, Daniel completed his first five passes in a row and since has missed on five of his last six, looking at third down and ten coming up. Abbott knows how to diversify his portfolio of passes with his different receivers. That time incomplete. Intended for Jeremy Macklin, who is way behind him. And uh, he's a finance major, Chase Daniel is. And uh, anyone that can hook up with Warren Buffett, Bob, has a lot of juice. <laughs> Particularly right now, <laughs> yeah. the way things are going. I mean, everybody wants Warren Buffett's advice right now. And the two of them exchange emails and... Uh, Chase tell me that I uh, thought he did well on his financial accounting exam that he had a couple of days ago. Tell you what, back to this Oklahoma State defense. This is impressive right now. Another potential stop here for the Cowboys. It's the side of the ball that not many people have been talking about. And the low rugby line drive kick goes through the back of the end zone and will come out to the 20-yard line. Cowboys defense so far has been immovable. Back with more right after this. 
Oklahoma State leading Missouri 7 to 3 with 12 32 to go in the first half Mark Jones along with Bob Davey big day in college football Bob Texas defeats Oklahoma Missouri with a great opportunity yeah. here tonight well sometimes that opportunity is maybe a curse if you're Missouri you know you sit around that hotel all day see Texas go down you play or Texas beat Oklahoma Oklahoma the number one team you play Texas next week it may be a curse you start looking at the big picture too much if you're Missouri on the run this is Kendall Hunter got about two yards on the play and uh, when you look at what's happening this week Alabama the night off LSU down right now against Florida Missouri last year Bob they were kind of surprised to be in the position they were 12 and 2 overall this year they get you get the feeling they feel like they they should oh, there's be there's no question I mean around that office yesterday just the confidence of the Missouri players and coaches but I think early in this football game it's the Oklahoma State defense that is very impressive to me and let's talk about just a second Tim Beckman Oklahoma State's defensive coordinator was on the staff with Urban Meyer at Bowling Green Dave Christensen the offensive coordinator for Missouri he visited Bowling Green to put this offense in so Tim Beckman understands the spread offense of Missouri and so far Oklahoma State's defense I think has been outstanding at the early story of the game so far second and 13 for Zach Robinson Robinson on the move Boy, he can wheel it. He had those defenders on skates, made a couple of nice moves, and picked up 14 yards for the first down. And the balance that gives you in your offense. We've seen Chase Daniel take off several times and run with the football, but you have a quarterback that can run. And it seems that's like that's all you see now in college football. You watch Sam Bradford, Colt McCoy today, they can run yeah. and also throw. This is Hunter stopped up for a loss about two on the play. Let's, let's go back to Wendy in the studio. Mark, thank you very much. Penn State trying to improve to 7 and 0 for the first time or start the season 7 and 0 for the first time since 99. Derek Williams will certainly help the cause. He is off for 63 yards this game on ESPN and Penn State 17 to nothing already over the Badgers. Wendy back here, second down and 11. Missouri ranked number three, Oklahoma State number 17. This is Bo Bowman. Nowhere to go, stopped up back at the 23-yard line by Sean Weatherspoon. You hear them chanting spoon. They're not booing. He's one of the crowd favorites. Well, and Oklahoma State coaches told us this week, Sean Weatherspoon is the best linebacker in the Big 12 Conference, period. Another guy not real highly recruited out of Texas. Both these teams just making a living going down into Texas. Third down and 17 coming up. Keep an eye on Des Bryant. He's at the top of the screen, yep. Always the potential to loft one down the field to Des Bryant. Robinson with plenty of time finds an alley. And incomplete at the 35-yard line. Fourth down and a defensive stand of sorts by the Tiger defense. A pass intended for Demarcus Connor. It'll be interesting to see if Oklahoma State just punts this football down the field to Jeremy Macklin, one of the best returners in the country. Last year, the only player in FBS, that's Football Bowl Subdivision, formerly Division I, that had a touchdown via punt return, kickoff return, rushing, and receiving. <laughs> they even look on the punt. <laughs> they look over <laughs> the sidelines. It's just a habit, right? <laughs> That Fodge punter standing on his own nine yard line. This is the first Cowboy punt of the night. That's not a rugby style punt. He's taken off. And he's going to be close. And he won't get it. Couldn't turn the corner. Mike Gundy rolls the dice. And it comes up in the Tigers' favor. Yeah, great play by Kenji Jackson, number 13. And he did not call that fake punt. That is an audible that the punter has the ability to check to versus a certain look. 
Bose just takes off, but watch the closing speed right there. That is a great effort by a young guy, Kenji Jackson, on special teams. Chase Daniel now working with a shorter field at the 36-yard line, first and 10. Little receiver screen here. Pass complete to Perry. And Perry gets stopped up at about the 34-yard line. And there's times in those audible situations for the punter, you love to just put a freeze call on it if you're Mike Gundy and say, look, I don't care what they do, just punt that football, but you can't blame a guy for trying to make a play. Second down and seven coming up. Ackland, the closest receiver to the quarterback, Chase Daniel, number nine. And this is Macklin on the end around, still on his feet. Got enough for the first down to the 24 yard line. Jeremy Macklin had surgery a couple of years ago after blowing out his knee, came back last year, was the co freshman of the year in the Big 12 Conference and still putting up big numbers picked up nine that time they do a great job with him very creative with ways to get him the football 58 yard run after the catch against Nebraska for Jeremy Macklin Chase Daniel out at wide receiver now right here boy we are seeing a lot of funky formations here drawn up on the sandlot <laughs> Daniel fakes the throw he turned, he's getting in touch and he fumbles it. The Cowboys have it. Are they going to rule that he was down? They're going to say that he was down. But Chase Daniel getting in touch with his inner Derek Washington tonight. <laughs> Turning into a running back. If it's not tough enough to defend all this stuff, then you throw some gimmick plays in there. He was obviously down right there. I'm telling you, that number 25 has brought out the running back in Chase Daniel tonight. You know, he is 225 pounds. Yeah, he's not a little guy. Well, he's about 5'10 and a half if we want to go there. A lot. <laughs> First and 10, Washington this time. Weaving his way between the tacklers and Derek Washington close to another first down for the Tigers. He picks up 10. Isn't it amazing how special teams plays spark football teams? I mean, this Missouri team, now granted, they had short, excellent field position, but that fake punt by Oklahoma State right now has sparked the Missouri football team. And Aaron Andrews reporting to us a few moments ago that Jeremy Macklin limped off the field, was a little bit shaken up, second down and one. Touchdown Tigers! Don't give them a short field position. I promise you, they score well enough from long distance. But Derek Washington, an excellent block by Colin Brown, number 61, the big right tackle on the touchdown run. That was his 11th rushing touchdown of the season, the 12th of his career. Washington, if you remember, came into this game leading the country in scoring. And Missouri now takes a 10-7 lead. He had problems putting the ball on the ground last year, fumbling, but secures it this time for the score. Back after this. ESPN's College Football Primetime. Brought to you by Papa John's. Order by text message or online at papajohns.com. And Verizon Wireless. An absolutely beautiful night here in Columbia, Missouri at Faro Field in Memorial Stadium. I'm Mark Jones along with Bob Davey and Aaron Andrews down to the sidelines. The Tigers with a great opportunity tonight coming in rank number three with the loss today by Oklahoma at the hands of the Texas Longhorns. The Tigers with a great chance if they're very impressive perhaps to notch that number one spot. And Oklahoma we'll see. State, excuse me, Mark, Oklahoma State, a great return team with Des Bryant and Parrish Cox back there. This is Parrish Cox across the 20. 
stopped up at about the 23-yard line. We'll get your weekly dose of NFL news and analysis on ESPN Sunday at 11 a.m. Chris Berman and the crew hosting Sunday NFL Countdown presented by IBM. We'll discuss what's going on in Oakland. What's at the core of the Raiders meltdown? And Chris Carter heads to Miami to find out more about the Wildcat formation that has helped Ronnie Brown and the Dolphins win their last two games. At 7 p.m., Chris Berman, John Saunders delivered the day's highlights and scores during Sports Center. Sunday NFL Countdown presented by IBM and Sports Center on ESPN Sunday. First down and 10 for the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Kendall Hunter still on his feet. By about six yards, and let's go to Wendy Nix in the studio. Mark, it's a Taco Bell studio update. Wisconsin has lost two straight, haven't lost three in a row since the final three games of 2004. Trying to avoid that, Allen Everidge puts the Badgers on the board 17 7, Penn State. All right, Wendy, back here, the Oklahoma State Cowboy offense revving it up. Second down and three. The team that last week put 56 on the board against Texas A&M. Got some flags down in the field. Cowboys came in scoring over 50 in four consecutive games. Full start. Over 65 in the offense. You know, last Five year, Mike Gundy, a huge gamble. Remember Bobby Reed, face of the program, highly recruited quarterback. A lot of people thought he was going to be an All-American quarterback early in the season. He benched Bobby Reed, went to Zach Robinson, then the I'm a man, I'm 40 deal came out of now infamous, yeah. Infamous, but what a huge decision and a huge gamble, but it's really paid off for Oklahoma State. Now, things really have changed in the last year for quarterback Zach Robinson at the hands of Mike Gundy, who made that call. Well start, number 86 in the offense, five-yard penalty, second down. And even Zach Robinson will tell you that a year ago at this time, he still kind of felt that there were players on that team that still might have felt that Bobby Reed should have been the quarterback. Now it's all his. Mark, that was a huge decision. I mean, Bobby Reed was a super highly recruited player from Houston. And make no doubt, he was the face of the program. But to make those kind of decisions, that's what you're paid for. And if they don't work out, you're not going to be paid long. But fortunately for Mike Gundy, it's worked out. Second down and 13. Kendall Hunter stopped up at the 21-yard line by Jerron Baston. At the start of the year, he was the only non-returning starter on the defensive line. Keep in mind that the Missouri Tiger defense had 10 returning starters this season, so continuity really shouldn't be an issue for their defense. High, high expectations for this Missouri defense as we look at Gary Pinkle. But boy, that fake punt by Oklahoma State, this sounds like a different crowd and looks like a different Missouri football team since that mistake. And wide open and couldn't find Des Bryant, who was wide open at about the 40-yard line. Good pressure up front. Yeah, Ziggy Hood. Ziggy Hood. Exactly. And the NFL scouts, I talked to one yesterday, they love Ziggy Hood. Three-year starter, a disruptive force up front. That's a three and out for Mike Gundy's offense. And Jeremy Macklin back in the ball game, perched at his own 35-yard line. Fodge, who tried that fake punt, tried running for the first down last time. This time, will punt it away to Macklin. And Macklin sidesteps the first tackler. Over the 45 to the 46 yard line. You just kind of hold your breath yeah, when got, Macklin touches the ball. He got tackled by his own guy. <laughs> he appears to be a little shaken up. More on the other side. Back at Faroe Field, Memorial Stadium in Columbia, Missouri. Remember, five of the last six games between these two teams have been decided by a touchdown or less. Three of them have gone into overtime. Jeremy Macklin for Missouri on the sidelines right now. He was shaken up after returning that punt a few moments ago. First down and 10, Chase Daniel working out of the shotgun. Complete to Kaufman. <laughs> And Goffman picked up about four on the play. He loves to do that. We saw him against Illinois do that. 
as you watch this Missouri team, it's interesting. We watch Oklahoma State. They look over to the sideline. They check the play at the line of scrimmage just about every play. Missouri will run the play that's called 95% of the time. In other words, you don't see them looking over there. They don't check at the line. 95% of the time, they call the play, run the play that was called. Daniel to Washington. D. Wash on D. Move. Down to the 26-yard line and a first down for the Tigers. He had a career-high 139 yards rushing last week against Nebraska. Picked up 24 on that reception. Pretty good block by Ryan Madison, 76 downfield. That's the play before right there, out there to Chase Kaufman. That's what set up the last one. Macklin back in the ball game, meanwhile, for the Tigers. With a bubble screen to Washington. He got rocked. Held onto the ball, but Derek Washington took a shot that time from number 41, Ori Lemon, and number 23, Terrence Anderson. Talk about different looks. Look at this. Here's the center right here. All they have is a guard lined up. The other tackle's over here. So you talk about an unbalanced formation. There's just a center and a guard on one side. Second down and six coming up. Jimmy Jackson in the ball game, number one. Kaufman again. And Kaufman at 6-7, not afraid to put his hat down and put it on a defender. They're rolling right now. And they give you so many looks. Look at the splits in here. These line splits. I mean, there's a huge cavern right here compared to the Oklahoma splits up here. And they do so many little things that cause the defense so much stress. 3.20 to go here in the first half. I'm going to ask in a minute how, to, how you counter that kind of wide spacing that's incomplete. Let's first go back to the studio and Wendy. Mark, a reminder what's going on around our family of networks on ABC, the Bank of America 500 under the lights in Charlotte. Kyle Busch running out in front. Penn State over Wisconsin 23 to 7. That's on ESPN. And of course, you guys taking care of business on ESPN too. And, uh, speaking of car races, the speed here pretty fast. <laughs> Daniel up top and incomplete. Number 84, Tommy Saunders, the closest receiver. Back to the splits on offense, Bob. As a defense, how do you try and counter those splits? Well, your first temptation is to plug linebackers through those gaps, but it's not as easy as you think. And it's really tough on the defense because you have to honor those splits and spread out wider with the guy you line up on, which causes a lot of seams up in there, particularly in the running game, and it gives great lanes for a 5'11 quarterback like, like Chase Daniel to throw through. Only giving up two sacks on the season. Daniel up top and incomplete. Right at the goal line intended for Tommy Saunders, who couldn't bring it down, and it's fourth down coming up. And in comes Jeff Wolford, their place kicker. So another win, quote unquote, of sorts for that Oklahoma State defense. Anytime you can keep Missouri out of the end zone, it's a victory of sorts. Yeah, when you have a quarterback averaging 76% in game completion rate, just if the ball hits the ground, it's considered a win. Wolford's field goal from about 34 yards out. And he shanks it. Boy, he hit that one fat. It might have been tipped at the line of scrimmage by Ori Lemon. No, I, I think he just hit it fat, just like you said. Boy, two missed field goals tonight, one by Oklahoma State, one by Missouri. But I know you've heard that sound on a golf course when all of a sudden you it play, just goes flat. And you on. haven't even played with me. <laughs> Number 17, Oklahoma State hanging in with Missouri right now, down by a field goal under three minutes to go in the first half. 
Cowboys set up the screen well executed Hunter and Hunter out near first down at the 30 yard line. Let's go downstairs to Aaron. Well Mark after Missouri's last incompletion that was the very first time I've seen any sort of reaction from Chase Daniel. He walked over to the sideline as you see he's very upset. He had a few choice words for anyone that wanted to hear on the sideline and it was interesting meeting with him yesterday. His theme was I need to keep my team cool loose and relaxed Jonesy. And he talked about how he grew a mustache. Good effort there <laughs> on the upper lip. And then he actually shaved, I guess, a mohawk. Used the uh, four blade, I guess is what you call. Um, but he said this was all in an effort to keep everyone calm, cool, and relaxed for this game. Yeah, he had a nice disposition, Aaron, about the football offices yesterday when we had a chance to meet with him and uh, had a chance to log on to that Heisman website he's got, uh, chaseforheisman.com. Some, some pretty impressive stuff. Robinson pretty impressive on that pass completion to Bo Bowling. And they pick up another first down with under two minutes to go. 18 yard pickup for Oklahoma State. Yeah, they actually sprinkle a little bit of option pass. You know, Zach Robinson looked like he was going to come down the line and run the option, then backs out in an excellent play action pass scheme right there. Kendall Hunter runs it, gains about a yard on the play, stopped by Baston that time. Stopped by Baston. You know, not a lot of points in this game, but a lot of offense. I mean, it's at an exhausting pace, the, the, the clip at which they go, these two offenses. Second down. Second down and nine coming up for Oklahoma State. Mac Robinson, the forgotten quarterback in the equation of this game tonight. Pretty accurate so far, 9 of 15. This time hands it off to Kendall Hunter. And Hunter down to the 45-yard line, picked up four with 1.11 to go. You no, know, Oklahoma State spent a lot of time on this game. They told us this week they studied four schools this summer, Missouri, Oklahoma, Texas, and Texas Tech. They spent a lot of time because they felt they had to win those games to get to the next level. They, so they put Missouri in that category along with OU Texas and Texas Tech that are in the Big 12 South. So you see the kind of respect they had for this Missouri team. With all respect to their previous opponents, this is the most talented team that Oklahoma State has faced so far this Oklahoma year in the Missouri State. Tigers. They're second of the half. And the Cowboys call a timeout as we go to the studio with Wendy Nix. Well, Mark, thank you. Coming up at the half, I'll be joined by Jesse Palmer. For once, we've got a big game that lived up to the big hype. What does this mean for Texas? We'll talk about that. And a first for Michigan, a likely one the Wolverines were not looking for. Well, I'll tell you my performers of the day, and one of them isn't even a player. Ah, oh, how's that for a tease? <laughs> we'll be back at the half right now, though, Mark. Back to you. All right, Wendy. Well, this week on Monday Night Football, Eli Manning, Brandon Jacobs, and the undefeated Giants head to Cleveland, taking on the Browns. How will the Browns fare against the defending Super Bowl champs at home? Monday Night Football on ESPN at 8.30 Eastern time. Coverage beginning at 7 Eastern with Monday Night Countdown delivered by UPS. I guess the Giants got over that uh, Plaxico Burris situation that uh, has now uh, subsided. Nothing like a little uh, turbulence along the ride for the defending champs. Keep toasting in the ball game on third down and five at running back. Got to get to the 40-yard line to pick up the first down. And he finds his receiver, Des Bryant, who gets the first down and then some down to the 37. He picks up eight on the play to move the chains. Boy, got to look at him down on the field before the game. He's a very impressive looking player. Yeah, he had eight touches against AM last week, had four touchdowns on eight touches, Des Bryant. To Bryant again, and incomplete, and Bryant took a hit. And the Oklahoma State Cowboys won a flag, and they get a late one there. Number four, Hardy Ricks came in and rocked Des Bryant's world. And I think that was an excellent call. I mean, Des Bryant was really defenseless on that sideline. And Hardy Nicks came in, Ricks came in, excuse me, and unloaded on him. I mean, he was in a very vulnerable position. I'm talking about Des Bryant. That is the second time, Bob, that Bryant has been shaken up 
tonight already in the first half. In the first quarter, he got up slowly after a hit. And you know, after the play, personal foul on the defense, 15 yards, first down. Well, let's take a look at it. I, t I see Des Bryant right now in a vulnerable position. I think that's a good call. And interesting, Missouri, the least penalized team in the NCAA, have only had 15 penalties all year. Not to take us off the subject, but there were two very controversial calls in that Oklahoma-Texas game with Colt McCoy on the sidelines and guys kind of pulling up and trying yeah. to help him and yeah. that's a very yeah. difficult call. It really has well, come into focus today. You know they're going to err on the side of protecting an unprotected player. First down and 10. Gets Oklahoma State closer. And well within field goal range right now for Dan Bailey. Let's see what they do. They may want more than just three. Uh, one time out left for Oklahoma State. Play fake by Zach Robinson under heat. It's oh, loose. God. It's alive. Yeah. Scoop and score. Fast <laughs> in scoop. I don't <laughs> think he's going to score, though. <laughs> he need a cab ride to get there, Bob Davey. Striker Shulock strips that football out of there. And Jerron Baston comes up with the scoop portion of the Boy. scoop and score. Watch striker Sulak, 38, takes an inside move, comes all the way around the horn. Now we'll get a chance to look at that and see if his arm was going forward. No, that ball is out. That's a good call. Boy, Oklahoma State goes from being within sure field goal range to now it coming back yeah, the other way. And they've already missed a 25-yard field goal earlier in the game, yeah. so that's at least six points they've left on the field. That will be Previous reviewed right Previous play is under review. Ruling on the field is fumble and recovered by Missouri. Boy, Zach Robinson seeing an opportunity fall by the boards that time. Let's take a look now. No, that arm was that's not going forward. That's a fumble. I, I think an excellent call. Remember the standard is there must be indisputable video evidence to overturn the call on the field. But how about Jerron Baston at 310 pounds? You didn't really watch think he him was coming go, around. Now, <laughs> right as this thing develops, he sees a bunch of open field in front of him. He got quicker, didn't he? <laughs> Jerron Baston. Like you said, 6-1-3-0-5 from Kansas City, Missouri, a first-year starter. If we free him. And Shulak did a nice job to knock that ball loose. But squandering scoring opportunities for Oklahoma State. They missed the 25-yard field goal. They were in obviously field goal position right there, plus the fake punt that went awry. Really three mistakes. But they've played extremely well yeah. overall. Last time that they played here at Memorial Stadium for O'Field, uh, Oklahoma State coming away with a victory. What are the odds coming in that it was a 10-7 game potentially at halftime in this game? Now look right here. If we stop that, there is nothing ahead of him. I mean, it is 315 <laughs> pounds going down you, the field. <laughs> the ruling on the field is confirmed. First down, Missouri. So you weren't expecting the turbo to kick in for him at that point. Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> you know, he had his first sack ever last week against Nebraska in Lincoln. And he was voted the most improved defensive lineman during spring ball. Missouri leading by a field goal. Six seconds to play here. You would... Uh, think they just throw it up. Yeah, and you know what? Wolford last week, 59-yard attempt at Nebraska, just missed it by six inches to the left. That was his first miss ever in conference play. Daniel, they go underneath. Time out. Down to the 34-yard line. What do you make of that strategy to go short and then try and stop the clock? I think it's great if you could stop the clock, but look at Oklahoma State racing off the field. And doing it quickly. <laughs> This is obviously reviewable as well. I think it's great strategy, particularly because I see that referee signaling Oklahoma State. Get back here. To come come back out. Missouri, please put one second on the game clock. And this is going to give 
their place kicker Jeff Wolford an opportunity to kick a field goal. Here's the clock. Now this is great strategy. Yeah, he's down. You can call timeout from the sideline. So clearly they have a second left. Yeah, the first down stops the clock. And there you see there was clearly at least two seconds to go. They're going to put one second back on the clock, and that is Jeff Wolford, who, as Bob mentioned a moment ago, missed his first conference field goal ever last week, albeit a 59-yard attempt against Nebraska. I'll tell you one thing. Oklahoma State tried to influence the call. <laughs> and this attempt... They're going to place it down at about the 42-yard line. It'll be a 52-yard attempt. His career long is 54. He's very still down in the field, and this one will be pushed to the right. And now Oklahoma State, as well as Missouri, can run off the field. That's the end of the first 30 minutes of play. A surprisingly low-scoring first half so far. Missouri trying to stay undefeated, as well as Oklahoma State trying to remain undefeated. Both come in at 5-0, and oh, and Missouri with the potential to ascend to number one with an impressive win. A surprisingly low scoring game at the break. Both teams with their share of missed opportunities downstairs to Aaron Andrews. Well, Coach, we've seen a few things maybe uncharacteristic of your offense. A three and out, two punts. What's going on? Well, two punts isn't that awful, but we it was certainly, certainly uh, they're doing a good job on defense. I think we're doing a pretty good job on defense. So, uh, you know, we got out of sync a little bit, and we, 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 we got to play catch a little bit better, and, and we got to uh, be able to run the ball a little bit better. They were moving the ball in the first quarter, but your defense, you said, are playing well. What did they adjust? How did you adjust in the second quarter? Well, I think we just tried to get the, the, the the defense in quick so we get set and play and I think we're trying to get a, a calls in late and it, it wasn't working very good for us. All right coach thanks Mark. Three point game at the break this game had a lot of potential but potential is like popcorn in the microwave Wendy Nix some pop and some don't 10 three at the break back to you for the halftime report. Here at Memorial Stadium for O'Field, Missouri leading 10 to 7, a surprisingly low scoring game at the break as we get ready for the start of the third quarter under the lights. And you look at the points respectively on the season coming into this game, both right at around 53 per tonight, well under their normal pace at 10 and 7, respectively. I know you didn't think we'd be talking about the defenses well, after the first half. You know what? You're right. But you, you kind of had that I know something you don't know look <laughs> in your eye when we were talking about a potential low scoring game in the open. You actually brought well, that up. You so. know, I've got a little bit of a feeling right now. Uh -huh. These offenses are going to explode a little bit, though, in the second half. I mean, if you look close, bottom line, I mean, one's averaging 53, one averaging 52. You held them to 10 and 7. But they left some points on the field, both teams. I have the feeling this is going to end up being a shootout before it's all over. Okay. Oklahoma State will receive the ball to begin the third quarter of play. That's Parrish Cox at the 27-yard line, where it'll be first down and 10 for Zach Robinson, their quarterback. I'm Mark Jones, along with Bob Davey. And, Bob, when you talk about the sudden emergence now of the defenses, is it enough for both teams to be successful resting on the laurels of their defense right now? No. You don't think so? That was simple. I mean, Next. It comes down to 53 and 52 points a game these offenses are scoring. They played great defense, I think, in the first half, both defenses. But there's going to be plenty of points before this game's over tonight. Robinson keeps it. He falls forward to the 32-yard line as we take a look at our first half stats brought to you by Toyo Tires. I think what jumps out, third down conversions for Missouri, one for five. 
The other thing you don't see, two missed field goals by Missouri, a missed field goal by Oklahoma State, plus a turnover in the red zone right before the half, and the missed fake punt opportunity by Oklahoma State that led to a Missouri touchdown. So some mistakes, particularly in the kicking game in this game so far. Robinson on the toss to Kendall Hunter, has an alley and then some. Kendall Hunter accelerating through the hole, still on his feet. Kendall Hunter singing, so long, Tigers. 68 yards in a bolt into the end zone. Hunter got a great block on the edge from Mosley on his path to the end zone. Are we still on that subject of how great the defense, the defense was in the first the half? Long. But how about Oklahoma State comes out and runs the option all of a sudden? Missed tackle by Justin Garrett right there. And then the speed of Kendall Hunter in the open field. That didn't take long. No. <laughs> Young man, Hunter was expected to redshirt last year, but... Uh, Dentrell Savage. Rolling on the field is touchdown. We're going to try and see if maybe he stepped out of bounds along the way. Dentrell Savage was the starting tailback last year. He became hurt. And then Kendall Hunter, who was expected to redshirt, ended up getting a lot of playing time, ran for almost 700 yards. Let's take a look at what they might be reviewing. They got close to the sidelines here. Well, that doesn't yeah, show it. It does not look like he went out of bounds. Now, Justin Garrett's not real happy we keep running that back on that, that missed tackle right there, but looks to me that that's going to stand. Yeah. Uh, that might have been the closest, that right something. foot. Is that some athleticism right there, though? Just staying in bounds. Here's probably the best look at it. Uh, he stayed in bounds. That's a touchdown. Yeah, that's the ninth rushing touchdown of the year for him, and here's the call on the field. After review, the call on the field is confirmed. Touchdown, Oklahoma State. A career-long jog for Kendall Hunter. Well, those rushing statistics for Oklahoma State, they just improved drastically on this first series of the second half. As the Cowboys take a 13-10 lead with the extra point to come. They say how quiet he is. You could see right there on the bench. Most guys would be hooting and hollering and <laughs> jumping around. He just sat down on that bench. The extra point good. The frequently laconic, quiet Kendall Hunter lets his game do the talking. Loud talking right now. Back with more after this. Back at Fro Field, 14-10. The Oklahoma State Cowboys leading the game. An upset brewing here on the plains of Missouri. You're going out on the limb. That's the first time I heard it tonight. <laughs> I was waiting to use the U word. <laughs> I think it might be kind of appropriate right now. The Cowboys have proven to be a worthy opponent. Macklin, one yard deep. He's going to take it out. And Macklin stopped up short of the 20-yard line. Let's go back to Wendy Nix in the studio. Mark, thank you very much. It's a prime time pulse. The Bank of America 500 in Charlotte. They are currently running under caution. And on ESPN, Penn State up big over the Badgers. 31 to 7 en route to starting their season 7 and 0. Mark? All right, Wendy. And uh, we have a flag down on the field during the kickoff. Here's the call. During the return, holding number 88. 10 yard penalty. First down. You know, Missouri, two 15-yard penalties in the first half. You said the least penalized team in college football. Now a penalty to start the second half. A little bit out of sync. Some uncharacteristic things for Missouri in this yeah. game. Now. Well, we'll see how they react. This is the team that coming into this game had only trailed for a total of 13 seconds the entire season. Chase Daniel on first down and 10. Tomlin from the pocket complete at the 12-yard line. Macklin, and let's go downstairs to Aaron. Jonesy, you guys were just mentioning Missouri's penalties. Well, that's something Oklahoma State head coach Mike Gundy told me was the reason why his offense wasn't doing anything in the first half. He said, we're not finishing drives, we're not finishing series because we're getting penalized, and we need to stop that. Guys, just an update, too, on the Cowboys offense. Des Bryant, we saw get hit so many times. He's fine, he's ready to go, and obviously so is Kendall Hunter, who came back and scored for that. Yeah, providing some pyrotechnics, some fireworks there after the 
first run of his third quarter. Washington that time picking up a couple of yards and uh, his counterpart Derek Washington doing a decent job tonight and uh, when we asked Barry Pinkle his head coach about the success that D Wash has had so far this year he said that hey I'm not surprised it's happened. He's got great vision and he's always seeing that next level of tacklers coming at him. Daniel firing incomplete. No flags on the play broken up nicely that time by number 17 Jacob Lacey it was intended for Tommy Saunders and a three and out and that is a huge psychological boost coming out of that second half coming out of halftime I mean Oklahoma State gets the football 68 yard touchdown run now three and out and Des Bryant back returning this punt who had a 78 yarder last week against A&M also has a 71 yarder on the season. Here's Jake Harry punting uh, coming into this game. He hadn't punted actually had just punted two times in the previous three games. Rolls out rugby style and gets a very auspicious bounce. Des Bryant watches it trickle all the way down to the 31 yard line. It has been a very turbulent, tumultuous, rough night for Des Bryant. Look at this. The first play of the game, he got rocked, got hit there, and then recently, another one. You know, two great receivers in this game. Des Bryant and also Jeremy Macklin. Been pretty quiet tonight, both of them, particularly Macklin, who I'm not sure is 100%. We saw him on that kickoff return a few moments ago. Didn't appear to have that normal burst of explosiveness that he has. Hunter and Toasted in the backfield. This is Hunter, who last time he touched the ball ran for 68 yards and a score this time. Just about two on the play. Amazing in college football how quickly the landscape changes. Missouri sits around all day today. They watch Texas lose. Or excuse me, they watch Oklahoma lose, who is the number one team in the country. What an opportunity for them tonight. Could fall to number one, but all of a sudden, hands full just winning this game tonight. Oklahoma State with a win would improve to 6 0 for the first time since World War II. Second down and eight coming up for Zach Robinson. The game is to Kendall Hunter. Got a nice block from Zach Robinson. And the turbo kicked in and he falls down. Out of bounds, helped up by the Missouri sideline players, though. And a pickup of 22 yards. Here's what happened today amongst Boy, the top five. I'll tell you what now, Alabama, by being idle. I mean, you look at Missouri in jeopardy right now. LSU down at the half, 20 to 7, I believe. And how about the Texas Longhorns? Mac Brown's probably back home in Austin right now. They're watching this game because they have the Mizzou Tigers coming to Austin next week. A big two week stretch for Missouri, including this game tonight. On first and ten, Zach Robinson, bootleg action, has a man wide open downfield. And he's run out of bounds at the 49-yard line. Baston there in pursuit along with Smith. Oklahoma State turning the beat around in the second half, running the ball. Statistically, anyway, already 94 yards in the second half, just 77 in the first. The average 315 yards a game rushing, which is number two in the country. I mean, those are crazy numbers. I mean, they are crazy numbers now. Well, you read that media release and you're like, are you sure? Is this a typo? Loss of four on that last play. Second down and 13. A little draw play to Hunter with nowhere to go. Brought down to the 49 by Baston. And the Hunter with some impressive numbers in the second half on just three carries. You know, for every great player, there's a little bit of high school football lore attached. And the story goes with the young man Hunter out of East Texas that back in a game in high school, he broke his ankle in a game and said don't worry just leave me in and he kept on playing it on it for the next three quarters he probably didn't say anything he probably didn't say keep me in and what they say he doesn't talk much third and 14.
Robinson. Picked off at the 34. Bridges. And the Tigers have the ball on the turnover. There's a flag down on the play as well. But Castine Bridges, the 6'2 senior, comes up with the play. Interestingly enough, last week against Nebraska, he rated out the highest of the players in the secondary. If it stands, it's Missouri's seventh pick Boy. of the season. It just affects. After the interception, illegal block in the back, number 12 on Missouri. Ten yards from the spot of the foul. First down. So for Zach Robinson, that's just his fourth interception of the year. In the six games they've played so far. So what does Gary Pinkle's team do now with the ball? 10.05 to go in the third quarter under a lot Cassidy of heat. Bridges, a big corner from California, junior college transfer. Zach Robinson gift wrapped that one for him. ESPN's college football primetime. Virtuva, the Volkswagen Bhutan, the only minivan in America with German engineering. And Kingsford, for a chance to win the ultimate bowl game and tailgate experience, go to ESPN.com, keyword search Kingsford. Under the lights of Faroe Field Memorial Stadium, I'm Mark Jones along with Bob Davey and Aaron Andrews down in the field at the place affectionately known as the Zoo. The Zoo's quiet tonight, yeah. that strange atmosphere. Uh -oh. it, is. it might wake up right now. <laughs> And Jeremy Macklin is the one to do it. Yeah. They have an attack at the zoo. zoo. Yeah. It doesn't take long, does it? Put the ball in the hands of a playmaker like that. But it just seemed very quiet to me in, in this place. But the little jailbreak screen. Macklin went 58 yards against Nebraska in the first series. That looks too easy, doesn't yeah. it? <laughs> they didn't touch him until 41 yards later when they laid a glove on him, pushing him out of bounds. Daniel over the middle, incomplete, and picked off at the 22-yard line. Number six, Ricky Price, off the rebound, off the hands of Denario Alexander. Just his second interception of the season, Chase Daniel. And this Oklahoma State defense, they forced eight turnovers. The last two games had five against Texas A&M in the first half, but that ball clearly should have been caught by Denario Alexander. But Ricky Price, young guy out of Houston, Texas, met his mom and dad last night. They came in from Houston. He came down to Missouri or Oklahoma State for Ricky Price. He decided to go to Okie State. He's a vocal team leader on the defensive side of the ball and defensive MVP. His dad played at Arkansas. I'm not sure that was a busted play. Robinson runs out of bounds at the 24-yard line. They had a busted play that time, and he was able to still gain a couple of yards. But I do think this crowd is a little shell-shocked tonight. You know, maybe the golden opportunity with Texas beating Oklahoma today, not sure what it is, but kind of a quiet crowd. This Missouri Tiger team with high expectations. The fans have them for them as well, too. Last year, 12-2, and two, with two losses coming at the hands of the Oklahoma Sooners. Second down and eight. Kendall Hunter saw that alley close up quickly. Now dancing around and brought down at the 23-yard line. Back to Wendy in the studio. All right, Mark, we check on LSU and Florida, a matchup of the last two national championships. This game at the Swamp, Florida with the commanding lead, but Jarrett lead, Chris Mitchell, puts LSU on the board 20-7, to the third quarter just underway. Mark? All right, Wendy, and... LSU number four, number one, is already lost today. Oklahoma lost to the hands of Texas. Alabama is idle. Missouri number three with a chance to perhaps leapfrog into the number one spot. The college football is a beauty contest. There's a beauty contest. There's Brian out there, a wide receiver now. And this is the talent portion of the competition. And the talented defense coming up big this time for the Tigers. Number one, William Moore, a.k.a. Willie Moe. 
Joe, the erstwhile rapper with three CDs out so far this year, makes the stop on Kendall Hunter. I can't let you pass that by. What kind of rapper was that? Erstwhile. Erstwhile? You know, he's, yeah. he's really into it. Does it a little here, a little there. <laughs> <laughs> I know one thing. That's a big 230-pound yeah. safety, William Moore. And again, you keep waiting for Jeremy Macklin just to break out of it. Macklin with a big catch and run a few moments ago. Oh. Watches this one bounce all the way down inside the five-yard line. The Cowboys will down into the five. A nice punt of 69 yards in all by Matt Fudge. He's made up for that missed fake opportunity he had in the first half. Mike Gundy on the sidelines with the starting quarterback, Zach Robinson. 14 to 10, the Cowboys winning, but Missouri with the football right now, 95 yards away. Little bubble screen to Jeremy Macklin. And Macklin got about eight on the play. That's one thing when the head coach is the coordinator. You saw that shot of Mike Gundy over there. I mean, you don't even watch the other side of the ball play, which there's pros and cons to everything, but at some point it does take you away from managing the entire football team. I mean, obviously right there, they're on defense right now. <laughs> Daniel hands it off to Derek Washington. Washington's going to lose about two or three yards on the play. It'll set up a third down to go. Ori Lemon coming in from his middle linebacking spot to make the play. This Oklahoma State defense, I mean, just has played superb tonight. And it's been a bit of the Achilles heel. You know, last year finished up 101st in total defense in the country. Comes in tonight 51st. But I think a lot of Cowboy fans skeptical of their defense. But a good night so far. Third down and three last week against Nebraska. They had five turnovers created in the first half. Daniel completes this pass to his tight end, Chase Kaufman, for the first down. And Mike Gundy, the school's all-time leading passer at Oklahoma State. Had some pretty good wheels himself. Of course, he had some good had some targets, good too, players. right? Hardly Dykes, <laughs> Barry Sanders. Talk about a guy who didn't say anything. Barry Sanders. He just went out and did it. Daniel completes it to Macklin. Lethal in open space. Hand walks down to the 25-yard line. On two yards short of the first down. I want to ask you this, Bob. If you're a quarterback and you're playing for a former quarterback who happens to be your head coach, it's a little tougher on you most times or not? I think that's a great opportunity just to play for a guy who experienced not only on the field all the things that happened, but off the field as well because that's a pressure cooker, being a quarterback in a, in a conference like the Big 12. Second down and three. Daniel going up top, has a man open behind the defense, and incomplete intended for Denario Alexander. He got in behind Andre Sexton, and uh, boy, Mike Gundy in a world of his own on the sidelines. Well, that's hard. I mean, that would be hard for me to do, just over there to that degree and not paying attention at all to your defense on the field, but that's the life of the offensive coordinator slash head coach. The flag was a penalty against the defense for holding. Let's not forget Larry Fedora, the offensive coordinator last year, went to Southern Miss as the head coach. And Mike Gundy really didn't like the CEO role, so he wanted to be the hands-on coordinator. The seven and six season last year. Chase Daniel on the jailbreak screen. Kaufman hurting another opponent for the second time tonight out near midfield at the 50 yard line. Picks up the first down on the 16 yard gallop and hurdle. It's amazing. It's our second time doing Missouri this year, and we've seen him hurdle probably four times, jump over defenders. Mm. That's a risky proposition. Someone's going to raise up on him one of these times. Daniel runs it. Oh, Chase Daniel. Maybe it's the new number 25 that he's wearing tonight. Picks up nine on that scamper. And remember, he's wearing number 25 for his former teammate, Aaron O'Neill, who passed away in July of 2005. Suddenly, during a preseason workout, the senior class each taking turns in commemorating him with that number 25. Second down and one. 
receiver screen again. This time it's Washington out of the backfield. And he picks up the first down. Well, Chase Daniel has passed for over 10,000 yards. That's a higher than the Empire State Building in feet, of course, if you want to make that conversion. Sears Tower. He has now surpassed the height of Mount Everest and certainly at an elevation and in a stratosphere of his own. First down and 10 now. Complete. I mean, he is picking apart that defense on this drive, Bob, with surgical precision. That time to Tommy Saunders. And this is the Missouri offense. But I'll be honest, just watching them on tape and seeing them in person may have been the best executed offense. In I hate sense? to put the word ever out there, uh -huh. but that I've seen maybe ever in college football. I mean, they executed an unbelievable level. And this is what I've seen from them on the past. A lot of quick passing game. Almost impossible to get pressure on Chase Day. This time under a little bit of heat. Throws it back. Macklin lunging forward all the way down to the 15-yard line. A pickup of 14 and another first down. Good pressure by Hugo Chenesaw, but again, Chase Daniel, normally this is what he does, scrambles and looks to throw. A lot of guys, you say, look, don't ever throw back <laughs> across your body against the grain like that. This guy's like a coach, though. I mean, I don't know. I've not been around a guy that's as mature as he is. Really under control. And he sends his running back, Jimmy Jackson, in motion. Into the boundary complete. Saunders, nice move. Tommy Saunders. No signal yet. Out of bounds. Right around the one-yard line. Jacob Lacey missed a tackle, allowing Saunders to get within a yard of scoring. But this whole drive, they have not thrown the ball, I don't think, more than 10 yards down the field. I mean, they have thrown a bunch of quick screens, short wide receiver routes. And you talk about the drive, Bob. It's a drive that started all the way down at their own five-yard line. And it has been precision. I believe Andre Sexton, the linebacker number 20, is down, but missed tackles. That time, Jacob Lacey dropped his head down, didn't keep his eyes on the target. See Andre Sexton come in right there at the end, and that's where the injury happened, right there. And Sexton clutching that knee of his as he went to the turf. Sexton, uh, a couple of years ago, was a freshman All-American selection and Big 12 Defensive Freshman of the Year. And he leads the team in tackles coming into this game. And you knew that the missed opportunities for Oklahoma State's offense, mm -hmm. you know, the missed 25-yard field goal, the turnover at the end of the first half, the turnover here in the second half on the interception, you're not going to shut this Missouri offense down all night now. Let's go downstairs to Aaron. Jonesy, just a Mike Gundy update. During this entire Missouri drive, he has not moved from that trunk. He <laughs> sat there the whole time, drawing up plays, hasn't even watched. He's, he's caught the Jumbotron a few times, but that's it, guys. I couldn't do that. <laughs> I could not do that. Oblivious to what's happening right now. This will get your attention, though. Jackson, touchdown. That is a cool head coach right there to not put his eyes on the playing field the whole time the defense was out there. Perhaps busy scripting his own comeback and counter to that touchdown run by Jimmy Jackson and an impressive methodical, arduous 95-yard drive by the Missouri Tigers led by their quarterback, Chase Daniel. For Jackson, it's his third rushing touchdown of the season and the 13th of his career in Missouri Retakes the lead 16 to 14 with the extra point to follow. Uh, so, somebody tell Mike Gundy that Missouri just scored. <laughs> you know, it's interesting. Mike Gundy took Previous a lot of heat. Is under review. Mike Gundy took a lot of heat from the fans for not showing a whole lot of emotion. And then he had the I'm a man, I'm the 40 incident last year. And it kind of turned his fortune, his fortunes around. But uh Obviously, this play is under review right here. Are they going to try and say that perhaps he was down before he got in? Or yeah. Let's take one more look at it. There's Jimmy Jackson, the backup tailback. Boy, yeah. that's a 
maze of players are you trying to see through to discern whether his knee was down or not. I'm not even going to try and call it on either of those angles. You can see the ball get through and break the plane, but you can't tell whether his knee is down. And that fame term indisputable video evidence, I don't think applies to that. I thought it was pretty disputable, yeah. didn't you? This might be a clearer look at it. Jackson. Well, there's the knee down, but you can't tell the plane of the goal line, obviously. So I think that will stand as a touchdown. And the Iceman, Mike Gundy, still over there getting <laughs> ready for that next offensive series when the Cowboys get the ball back. Well, and speaking with Coach Gundy recently, he told me that he's made improvements personally this year in uh, his decision making, uh, his, his patience, and taking input from his coaching staff. Uh, coach who considers Les Miles a confidant. Well, there's the difference. One's a CEO. After you. And one's the offensive coordinator. Paul stands. Touchdown. Now they're going to keep it. Impressive drive right there by the Missouri Tigers. I mean, think about that punt Oklahoma State had to back them up. Now the extra point. I'd say Daniels was pretty good. Daniels was pretty good on that drive. Eight for eight for 77. That would count. And that is why he is the leader so far. Many people say he's the leader. For the Heisman Trophy, although there's a lot of football to be played, Wendy Nix, back to you in the studio. Mark, it's interesting you make that point because this is why it's not over until it's over. LSU trailing by as many as 20 at one point, but they're going to make it a game. Andrew Hatch scrambles in. Now 2014 Florida over LSU. All right, Wendy, and... Uh... Tim Tebow in Florida with the lead against LSU and Tim Tebow the defending Heisman Trophy winner last year Chase Daniel was one of the finalists making the trip to New York finished up fourth he was the first Heisman finalist in school history and the school has plunked down some fifty thousand dollars towards his Heisman campaign this year I mentioned earlier there's a website chasetheheisman.com along with uh, that nice viewfinder that we were given yesterday to look at some of his accomplishments. What do you think, Bob? Is he the guy right I now? I think it comes down. If Missouri wins tonight, and I know it's early, the Heisman will come down to next week in Austin, Texas, between Colt McCoy and Chase Daniel. Two Texas high school quarterbacks shooting it out for all the balls. If they win tonight here in Missouri. Parrish Cox on the top kick return. And he takes it out to the 34-yard line. A 30-yard kickoff return by Parrish Cox. And, uh, yeah, we talk about the Heisman candidates. Chase Daniel, Colt McCoy, Texas, Missouri and Texas, respectively. The Big 12 quarterbacks really got this thing on lock right now. And going into the season, you know, Urban Meyer said that he didn't think that his quarterback would be running as much this year. Do you think that's been the case? Has, has that taken him out of the running a little bit, Tebow? Well, he's not had great statistics, obviously, but, uh, I mean, the quarterbacks in the Big 12 Conference have been unbelievable. There's five quarterbacks in the Big 12 Conference over 70% completions in the season. Pass complete. To number eight, Bo Bowling. And uh, Bowling with a nice reception pickup of 12 yards to continue that uh, train of thought with the Heisman. How does Chase Daniel, can it be locked up this early in the season? No, no way. They have to keep winning, number one. But just being considered the best quarterback in the Big 12, the Big 12 South with Sam Bradford, Colt McCoy, Harrell out of Texas Tech, the young quarterback at Baylor who I think will be a star, the freshman quarterback at Baylor. I mean, the Big 12 South quarterbacks, unbelievable. Kendall Hunter. Got about three on the play. Sean Weatherspoon making the stop. And here are the three really prodigious quarterbacks in the Big 12 Conference. Bradford, Daniel, McCoy. Look at their completion percentages. That is the most <laughs> astounding thing to me. 72% is the lowest of the three. 
Zach Robinson came into the game completing right at 72 percent as well. Pick up that time with 12 yards on the play. Number 80 Demarcus Connor. Can Oklahoma State close the deal offensively and finish? They've moved the ball, but they've not been able to score much. Now both offenses have been more efficient. Why not score? Touchdown, Cowboys! Number 85, Davis. That is a counterpunch, and maybe that's why Mike Gundy was unbothered by the touchdown by Missouri, planning his way on the sidelines with his back to the action. Wow. Right back at you. And Zach Robinson, look how cool. This guy's coming off an interception that was ugly on the last series. He's having some fun out there. Heisman Chase Daniel, what are you talking about? Man, there's another quarterback out here. Yeah, that's what Zach Robinson's play is saying tonight. Damian Davis with his first career touchdown pass. The extra point is good. Zach Robinson with his 11th touchdown pass. Let's take a look at this route. Damian Davis on the wheel route. The inside receiver right here is going to go right down the sideline and just a wide open situation. The linebacker trying to chase him. What a great throw and catch them. He puts a lot of air under that ball. Sean Weatherspoon, the linebacker on Damian Davis. Damian Davis, a big, tall guy, 6'5", 178 pounds out of Mart, Texas. A well, big week for Zach Robinson, celebrating his birthday a little bit earlier this week, and uh, Aaron Andrews has more. Aaron? Jonesy, we've been talking the whole game how huge tonight is for Missouri because Texas beat OU. And we mentioned at the top of the show, when Oklahoma State saw that Texas won, the coaches took their phones away, made them shut off the TV because they felt they were too young to handle all the post-game hype about how much bigger this matchup became. But when I talked to Zach Robinson before the game, he said, look, we watched it, it was exciting, and now the biggest game of our lives just turned much bigger. So these guys want it just as bad. Yeah, Aaron, they're certainly responding to the challenge. With two minutes to go, they lead by four. Macklin on the kickoff return out to the 24-yard line. And let me talk about that point Aaron just brought up, because I think it's a great point. When you play a Saturday night game like this at 8 o'clock, those players sit around that hotel all day like we do and watch those games. You are physically drained because you've been on that roller coaster of emotion all day, particularly when it's a team like Texas and Oklahoma that you know you're going to play. Right. And different teams respond different ways to that. And I mean, that's a huge point right there, just from an emotion standpoint. I want to get back to you on that and further that point a little bit after this play. Chase Daniel, wide open, complete at the 35-yard line. That's number 24, Derek Washington. Now, Bob, how do you, as we look at Coach Gundy back on that guard on the sideline, <laughs> How did you handle your team? Well, you try, to, that you try to get them out of the hotel and walk a little bit, but you don't want to just bust their chops, for lack of a better word, by right. not letting them watch television and watch games. I mean, that's part of college football, but you always worry about the emotions involved. Chase Daniel going to be sacked all the way back at Weller's Progress, maybe around the 30-yard line by Derek Burton. Let's go back to Wendy in the studio. Mark, thank you. How about a sports center right now? We start with Penn State. Daryl Clark, a 44-yard strike to Dion Butler. But you know what? The Nittany Lions scored early and often. This one out of control over Wisconsin, 41-7. The Bank of America, 500 over on ABC. Jeff Gordon, your leader, with a under 100 laps to go. Mark? Chase Daniel to Kaufman. Kaufman couldn't hurdle the defender that time. Brought down by number six, Ricky Price. With under a minute to go in the third quarter, an upset brewing here at Memorial Stadium. Oklahoma State, the Cowboys with the lead. Probably the toughest play in college football to defend is this screen. I mean, watch again. The ball's thrown behind the line of scrimmage. Now watch these linemen downfield in front of the receiver. I've seen more screens tonight in the last two drives than I've seen in college football. I mean, they're dependent on the screen. Ball start, 78 of the offense. Five-yard penalty, third down. And that's against Curtis Gregory, perhaps the most talented player up front on the offensive line for Gary Pinkle's team, number 78. Missouri, Missouri, a team that averages some 53 points a game coming in. 
held so far to just 17 with about a quarter to go. Missouri uh, the least penalized team in the NCAA this year. Five penalties already tonight. Cowboys come with a little pressure. And a pass complete. Chase Daniel. Boy, Bob, you mentioned it earlier. He just hangs in there completing it to Kaufman. He stands flat foot in that pocket. But again, Oklahoma State, some great pressure on Chase Daniel and another big stop. Missouri in unfamiliar territory, trailing going into the final quarter this year. This telecast is available in high definition. Brought to you by Pioneer's new Kuro. Welcome back, everyone, to Faroe Field for the start of the fourth quarter between Oklahoma State and Missouri. Missouri on a night rife with expectations. Number one has already lost. Number two is idle. They are number three and have a chance to leapfrog into the number one spot with a win, potentially, but right now trailing by four points. Let's take a look at tonight's AutoZone playbook. And it's all about the defense. Who would have ever thought, Bob Davey, we'd be talking defense tonight? Well, when you have one offense averaging 53, the other offense averaging 52, what a great opportunity for these two defenses. And I've been particularly impressed with this Oklahoma State defense. They were the perceived weak link on the team, but tonight have really showed well for themselves. Cowboys with the lead and possession up by four. Robinson given plenty of time, and he'll run with it. Robinson out to the 24-yard line, a yard short of the first down. Catch car making the stop on the play. You know, so, so much made about time of possession. You know, Oklahoma State number 10 in the nation controlling the football. You would think that all of a sudden that would be a huge advantage when you're up 21-17 in the fourth quarter right now. Robinson with the first down back to Wendy in the studio. You come to us, and we once again go to the swamp. LSU Florida, back and forth we go. Tebow is certainly not going to go quietly. Tebow to Lewis Murphy, and the Gators back out in front. 27-14 now over LSU. 316 to go in the third. Tim Tebow as the defending Heisman Trophy winner. Piling up some impressive numbers tonight. First down and 10 for the Cowboys. Robinson will take off again. And he's tripped up by his shoestrings at the 28-yard line by Justin Garrett. Well, Justin Garrett's had a good night. You just can't explain how difficult that is in the open field. One-on-one -on -one tackle. And that's one thing about these spread offenses. You used to get a lot of gang tackling. In conventional offenses, so much one on one tackling out in space, which is just so difficult. Mm. Good point. Second down and eight. Robinson hands it off. This is Hunter. And Hunter. About two yards short of the first down, got about six on the play. Remember the last time that Oklahoma State came into Memorial Stadium and Faroe Field here in Columbia, Missouri, they came away with a win in five of the last six games between these two teams. The final verdict has been decided by a touchdown or less with three of those games going to overtime. So this close game so far really should come as no surprise. Third down and two. Tough call on defense. All the arsenal of weapons for Oklahoma State, starting with some option. As Zach Robinson is going to call timeout right there. They've got Time two out. remaining. Oklahoma State. The cool coach on the sidelines, Gundy, charting the course. A crucial, critical third down and two coming up. 
for Oklahoma State. Ball on the 33-yard line. Keith Poston, the lone back in the game, behind the quarterback, Zach Robinson, who goes under center for the snap. Bootleg and wide open. First down and then some for Des Bryant. They get it to their playmaker, That's who gets the J-O-B done. He picks up 12. Great play design. That's what Mike Gundy was doing. Watch Des Bryant in motion. Then he's going to leak out. It's going to be a little bootleg pass. This is what Mike Gundy was drawing up. <laughs> that is a great play design right there for a big first down conversion. That misdirection with the wide receiver going against the grain is so difficult to defend. Gives them a first down and 10. Toasten bounces off a couple of tacklers and is brought down right around the line of scrimmage. Might have gotten a yard after falling forward. Zach Robinson came into the game, completed 72 percent of his passes, 10 touchdowns, three interceptions, had 196 rushing yards too. You know, we were talking about Tim Tebow earlier tonight. He and Tim Tebow were the only two quarterbacks last year to pass for over 2,800 yards and rush for 800. So Robinson in pretty elite company yeah. in that sense. You know, from Colorado, his mom went to Oklahoma State, his dad went to OU. He committed to Kansas State. And then his mom talked to me about going back on the state. <laughs> Hard to recruit those moms. That's yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tough on National Signing Day. Robinson. Nice move by Zach Robinson showing off his wheels there. Robinson. About three yards short of the first down. Sean Wetherspoon making the tackle on the play for Missouri. But Robinson picked up six. Watch this block by Toast at number five. Right there. Keeps Zach Robinson alive. Keeps it from being a negative play. Third down and three coming up. They were able to convert last time. They got the ball to Des Bryant. Little receiver screen. It's Bryant again. It's loose. The Tigers say they have it, and they do. The Tigers put the hat right on the ball and jarred it loose. And William Moore, the big safety, knocks that football out. The other impact player, Sean Witherspoon, recovered the fumble. Remember Gary Pinkle told us, getting ready for the Illinois game. We have two impact guys on defense. William Moore, number one, right there, causes the fumble, and Witherspoon, to a degree, caused the fumble as well. It was Witherspoon and Moore yeah. knocking that ball out of there. Well, there Moore talked about his great size at 6'1", 230. Here's Chase Daniel over the middle complete to Macklin. Macklin picks up eight. the 44-yard line. Still plenty of football to be played. 10-20 to go in the fourth quarter. Missouri with a full complement of timeouts remaining. Oklahoma State with two. That's three turnovers for Oklahoma State plus a missed fake punt that was like a turnover. So really four turnovers for Oklahoma State again puts their defense in a difficult position. Pass complete to Derek Washington who picks up the first down and then some inside the 40 to about the 38. Well, let's find out about this Heisman Trophy candidate quarterback. <laughs> Right now, your team down 21-17. Colt McCoy's already done it. It's in the books for what he did today against Oklahoma. It's time right now for Chase Daniel to do it. The guy's got a lot of clout. He writes a column weekly for the New York Times. Does a little blog and exchanges emails with Warren Buffett. Certainly popular and under some duress there. Got it off to Washington, but they're going to lose a bunch of yards. What more about Chase Daniel, Aaron Andrews? Jones, he also does his research by calling other quarterback backs. You remember the week that USC went down, Georgia went down, Florida went down? He got in touch with Sanchez, Stafford, Tebow, and relayed the message back to his team. All the quarterbacks said, hey, don't let the hype get to your team and don't let your team feel as bad as we do now. That's something he shared with all his guys, Jonesy. Yeah, he's hit 16 of his last 18 passes too, Aaron. You know, his wide receiver Jeremy Macklin said he has no counterpart to Daniel. I say that now, I say that after the game, I'll say it after the season. And Daniel completes this pass to Chase Kaufman. At about the 41, that's where his forward progress will be spotted. 
And for Kaufman, that's his 201st reception of his career. Boy, again, this Oklahoma State defense that's been a potential problem area, what a great job tonight. And nothing has come easy for this Missouri offense. I mean, they've contested just about every throw tonight. Tim Beckman certainly has done a great job, the team's defensive coordinator. Third and 13. Daniel under heat again. Downfield. And picked off at the 16-yard line. Andre Sexton still on his feet. And he wants more. Takes it all the way down to the 40-yard line of Missouri. And Daniel frustrated with himself in a late flag on the play. <laughs> Well, just as Aaron Andrews had said that he related the experiences of Mark Sanchez and other quarterbacks who are friends of his that he didn't want to feel the way that they felt after their losses respectively Daniel throws an interception it all started with the pressure and Oklahoma after State play, defense personal foul number 45 of Missouri 15 yard penalty first down that's going to go against Chase Kaufman. And another huge penalty for the least penalized team in the country, Missouri. Again, the pressure from Oklahoma State's defense, which they come into the game 114th in sacks, just throws the ball up to Andre Sexton right there. One more look at Sexton, who a couple of years ago was a freshman All-American and the Defensive Player of the Year in the conference. ESPN's College Football Primetime, brought to you by the new AT&T, your world delivered. And auto parts experts at AutoZone. Get in the zone. AutoZone. Back here at Memorial Stadium in Columbia, Missouri, a major insurrection, a major uprising so far tonight. Oklahoma State ranked number 17, leading Missouri 21 to 17. On the draw play, Kendall Hunter stopped up after a gain of about a yard on the play. A couple of teams that coming into this game had averaged 53 points per. The story of the night, though, the respective defenses who have acquitted well of themselves. Well, another area for Missouri, uncharacteristic. I said least penalized team in the country. Average three penalties for 30 yards. Tonight, six penalties for 68 yards. Wow. That personal foul against Kaufman at the end of the interception, a costly one. Oklahoma State in field goal range. A little option ball here. Hunter brought down at the 31. Nice support on the running game by Carl Giddies. Yes, St. Louis, Missouri. Freshman All-American last season. Quickly, it's third down and long coming up for the Cowpokes. Crowd senses the urgency right now. Oklahoma State, four of ten on third down conversion situations tonight. You can hear the zoo come alive right now. Here's the guy, Des Bryant, number one, down here at the bottom. See, Castine Bridge is going to line right up in his face. And they blow this one dead. Timeout, Missouri. <laughs> They're first of the half. So it's like that, Gary Pinkle. It's your move next. 6.40 to go. Oklahoma State leading under the lights here at Perot Field by four. 6.40 to go in the fourth quarter. The Cowboys looking at third down and 12 coming up. They've got to get to the 20-yard line of the Tigers to get the first down. A first down here would be huge for Oklahoma State. Mark Bailey, their field goal kicker, talking about Oklahoma State. His career line is 28 yards. So I'm sure that factors into the play call by Mike Denver. Let's see what they do. Robinson under some heat, giving more time into the end zone, open! Oh, Tawani, it's caught by Davis! <laughs> Damian Davis came down with the jump ball. 
the mobile quarterback, Zach Robinson, kept it alive. And then Damian Davis, the young sophomore six foot five receiver out of Mark, Texas, goes up over Hardy Ricks for the catch. And Zach Robinson was incredibly cool back there in the pocket when everyone else around him was falling apart he was able to make a play out of it and you can feel the air come out of this stadium right now the the animals aren't running the zoo right now Bob let's first start with the mobile quarterback keeps this alive scrambles turns to his left now it's a six foot five receiver down the seam watch him go up right here over the top of Hardy Ricks huge touchdown for Oklahoma State Oklahoma State on the cusp of a major upset right now leading number three Missouri 28 to 17 here at Faroe Field a touchdown reception a few moments ago by Damian Davis his second career touchdown from that guy Zach Robinson Zach Robinson is having fun now when you wear shoes like that <laughs> you better be a good kicker now. <laughs> you think oh yeah that's part of that T Boone Pickens gear collection at Oklahoma State now. That's, that's an upgrade all right that is an upgrade six and a half minutes to go Macklin can't find the handle Macklin takes it out to the 15 yard line. Zach Robinson has been cool under heat tonight. And you see just how athletic he is. We mentioned in high school, ran for a bunch of yards, threw for a bunch of yards, was a wide receiver as a junior. I think he's played outstanding and he's had fun tonight. Let's see how Chase Daniel counters here. He threw an interception on their last possession, which led to that Oklahoma State touchdown. Daniel wide open over the middle, complete to Tommy Saunders, and Saunders out over the 35 to the 37-yard line. They're going to have to hurry here with 6.14 to go. And they have no problem hurrying. That's the great part about this spread offense, no huddle. They're in two-minute drill every snap all season, so they are not out of their comfort zone right now. 21-yard pickup. Daniel... Throws it away. And he was inside the tackles. So that's going to be intentional grounding. Andre Sexton grounding. was right there. Number 25 of the offense. Forced at the spot of the foul. Lost him down. Bob, Second is it down. just me or has Oklahoma State gotten good pressure on Daniel well, tonight? I think you're exactly right. And this was not expected. I mean, Oklahoma State 114 out of 119 teams in sacks coming into this game. Missouri had only given up two sacks all season. And you see the frustration over there on Gary Pinkle's face. 6.03 to go. Daniel completes it. Macklin with the reception of the first down back to win the studio. Mark, a final reminder over on ABC, Bank of America 500. We've got about 43 laps to go. Penn State big over Wisconsin 48-7. Mark. All right, Wendy. Tigers trying to make a comeback here after the 27-yard pickup. Macklin came out of the game. He was shaken up again. And that's going to be ruled a completion. Earl Goldsmith with his first reception. And Macklin, not a good sight for Tiger fans, still on the sidelines. One thing, if you're Oklahoma State, don't change what you've been doing. I mean, there's an eternity left in this game for an offense like Missouri. Boy, they didn't even get lined up on that play, Oklahoma State. Another pass complete to Goldsmith. <laughs> Tell you, when Missouri gets it rolling, it is fun to watch now. And right now, they have it rolling. And Oklahoma State looks a little tired right now on defense. Five and a half minutes to go. Consecutive receptions by Earl Goldsmith of 11 and 7 yards. Daniel completes another one at the 24-yard line. Number 87, Andrew Jones, the young tight end. And a first down for the Missouri Tigers. Missouri came in undefeated at 5-0. and And with national championship aspirations, Macklin back on the field. That pass 
pass incomplete intended for Macklin. And Sexton was there defending. That might be an pass interference call. Yeah, obvious call. Sexton over the back of Jeremy Macklin. And Missouri far, far from being dead in this football game. Pass interference. Number 20 of the defense. It's a spot foul. Automatic first down. This week on Monday Night Football, Eli Manning and the Giants taking on the Cleveland Browns. How will the Browns fare against the defending Super Bowl champs at home? Monday Night Football on ESPN at 8.30 Eastern Time. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern with Monday Night Countdown delivered by UPS. Daniel on first and 10. Completes another one at the 17-yard line to Denario Alexander. Daniel is 23 of 26 this half. He's pitched it 26 times this half. <laughs> Under five minutes to go, second down and about six to go. Steps up in the pocket. Complete down to the seven-yard line to Jeremy Macklin. He is as cool, and I'm talking about Chase Daniel, in that pocket as any quarterback I've ever seen. I mean, he just stands there flat foot, never panics, doesn't feel the urge to take off and scramble, always keeps his eyes down for it. Daniel into the end zone. Caught. Touchdown. What a grab by number 81, Alexander. Boy, that didn't take long. An impressive drive. Chase Daniel a little slow getting up right there. But Denario Alexander, a great story. Two surgeries. Goes up. Had a ball bounce off his shoulder pads earlier for an interception. Goes up and makes the play. But Mark, this is the guy who had a knee yeah. in the Big 12 championship last year. Surgery. Had another surgery in the spring. Denario Alexander bouncing back. He's only played in three to five games coming into tonight. And he already had a couple of touchdown catches. They're going for the two-point conversion here. Daniel tipped up and picked off. They can run it back for points, but it's not going to get that far. Hugo Janasa intended for Tommy Saunders, so it stays 28 to 23 with 4.27 to go. Missouri with a couple of timeouts remaining. Oklahoma State with two timeouts remaining. Bob, ultimately now, at the start of the night, you said it's probably going to come down to the respective defenses and which one will outdo the other. Right now, it's going to be on Missouri's defense. Yeah, and, you know, Missouri defense, high expectations. Ten starters back. It's going to come down to defense and something we've talked about a little bit, time of possession. Mm. Oklahoma State ranked very high in keeping the ball away from opponents because they can run the ball. That's going to play in to be a factor here. Can Oklahoma State run the football, control the clock, and go back to Stillwater with a win? But a huge opportunity now for Missouri's defense because if Missouri gets the ball back, there's no question Missouri can take the football down the field in this game. Zach Robinson has been incredibly poised throughout the course of the night. He did have the one interception, but he's 17 to 25 passing for 200 yards. A couple of touchdown passes against that one interception. Then you always have Des Bryant back deep. He hasn't gotten an opportunity yet tonight. They've kicked it to Parrish Cox most of the time. This one comes down to the 17, and out around the 35, and still on his feet is Donald Booker. Take a look at the Big 12 North standings. A loss here doesn't really hurt Missouri all that much. There's still plenty of football to be played, but this is a game you have to think that they had in the win column coming in. Well, bigger picture from Missouri than just the Big 12 North Championship. I mean, this is a team that potentially could be the number one team in the country tomorrow. Yeah. But I think key right now for Oklahoma State, Mark, Mike Gundy knows Missouri gets that ball back. Chances are they're going to take it down and score. Don't get conservative on offense. Free wheel it because you don't want to give it back to Missouri. They're going to go to the air. Robinson under duress. Fires complete back across his body. 
thrown back against the grain all the way down into Tiger territory at the 48 yard line. Kendall Hunter picks up 12 for the first down and the zoo got quiet here. Well, some good young players. I mean, Kendall Hunter, only a sophomore, is a player. And Zach Robinson continues to impress me at quarterback. Saw the Big 12 South standings as well. For those of you just joining us, been a crazy day in college football. Number one, Oklahoma already lost earlier today against Texas. A win for Missouri could possibly vault them into the number one spot if it's impressive enough. Alabama number two not playing today. 3.45 to go. First down and 10, Oklahoma State. Hunter stopped up right at the line of scrimmage. Might have lost a bit, little bit of yardage. Number 48, Chavis making the stop. Really a good tackle right there by Tommy Chavis, the defensive end. Well, look at those numbers, Bob, for Kendall Hunter. 24 rushes, 154 yards. Came in averaging 141, but it was the 68-yard touchdown, the second play of the second half that sparked this team. Can the Tiger defense come up with a big play here? That's the question that looms, that begs right now. On second down and 10. Robinson incomplete. That might have been tight at the line of scrimmage by number 94, Ziggy Hood. Yeah, Ziggy Hood again. They wanted a little screen to Kendall Hunter right there. Ziggy Hood again will be an NFL defensive lineman. Is this where you dial up? D-E-Z for I'll tell you Des what, the Bryant. zoo is in it right now. You're exactly right. I find a way to get Des Bryant that football. He's number one for Oklahoma State at the bottom of your screen on third and ten. Robinson dumps it off, but it's going to be short. Call Not enough for the first down. Willie Moore, a.k.a. Willie Moe. I think a good spot for Missouri to call timeout right there. Carl Geddes also in on the stop with 2.43 to go. And Missouri burns another timeout. They have one remaining. Oklahoma State with two. I'll get your weekly dose of NFL news Sunday on ESPN at 11 o'clock a.m. Chris Berman and the crew with NFL Countdown presented by IBM. We'll discuss what's going on in Oakland. Then Chris Carter heads to Miami to find out about the Wildcat formation with Ronnie Brown that has helped the Dolphins so much. At 7, Chris Berman and John Saunders deliver the highlights on SportsCenter. Sunday NFL Countdown presented by IBM and SportsCenter on ESPN Sunday. So Chase Daniel right there wearing number 25 tonight. We'll get one more opportunity with 2.46 to go. That's pretty good night's work, isn't it? Mm. But what's on the line right here? Potential number one ranking in the country for Missouri. Now, I know they'd have to leapfrog Alabama. Potential Heisman Trophy for Chase Daniel. I mean, Colt McCoy already did it. He's at home watching this game in his apartment right now. But first things first, get the football back right here. If you're Jeremy Macklin, just shank it. Not a great effort. We're going to give Chase Daniel a lot of field to work with. Not as much as he would have had to have used. Everybody getting in on the noise making. 2.40 to go. Isn't it ironic? Chase Daniel, quarterback from Texas, Oklahoma State didn't offer him. He went on an unofficial visit to Oklahoma State. They had signed Bobby Reed, who's no longer in the program. Now you have Chase Daniel with all on the line here against Oklahoma State. Well, the Cowboy defense has done well all night. We'll see what they do here. That was in the air for a long time, complete to Earl Goldsmith with his third reception of the night. Boy, Daniel really does spread it around. Goldsmith was AWOL for most of the night until the last part of the fourth quarter here. Time not even an issue right here. Second down and one. Missouri with one timeout remaining. Cowboys with some pressure, and they force the incompletion and a flag thrown on the play. They may have roughed the quarterback. 
that was intended for Tommy Saunders. Four. Personal foul, roughing the passer, number 97 of the defense. 15 yard penalty, first down. Wow, terrible time for Jeremiah Price. Off the incompletion, all of a sudden a 15-yard penalty. You know, one of the themes of the day, Bob, I'm not judging, passing judgment on that call, whether it was right or wrong, but they are protecting quarterbacks in college football, especially this Saturday. Daniel. Complete again for number four, Jared Perry. Into Jared Perry. You go back to what happened earlier today in that Oklahoma-Texas game, and Colt McCoy twice was on the wrong end of a late hit on the fringes of running out of bounds, and the message is clear. They're taking care of quarterbacks. Well, and that was a good call. Yep. I mean, Jeremiah Price had plenty of time to pull up. Daniel oh, into trouble, and it's picked up. Intercepted by Patrick Levine, and that might do it. Chase Daniel with another interception, the third one tonight. Coming into the game, he'd only thrown one. Tried to force it in there to Jeremy Macklin. And I think everyone in this stadium, probably me included and you included, saw some Heisman Trophy drive coming right there. The stage was set perfect for Chase Daniel and this Missouri offense. But again, the Oklahoma State defense and Patrick Levine steps up for the third interception of the night. And Zach Robinson taking a knee. Missouri with one timeout remaining. Chase Daniel, who had gotten on the phone and called his colleagues Mark Sanchez and other quarterbacks who had lost the previous week, told his players he didn't want to feel that way. And the previous play is under review. The only thing, Mark, they actually ruled that play dead before they snapped the football. So they're actually going back to see if the interception was legitimate. Patrick Levine, I mean, you couldn't tell from that angle right there. This should be better. He's facing us. Yeah. So far, no dis indisputable evidence to overturn that call. None of the none of those views really look definitive. No. He sure sold it if he didn't catch it. There's a better view. That's not going to be overturned. No. But how about Mike Gundy? You know, you talk about a football program with some momentum right now. Oklahoma State. Yeah. You know, they get the gift from T. Boone Pickens. What was it? 163 million dollars. Yeah. That shows the commitment, obviously, Oklahoma State has to facilities and being first class in everything they do. And then if they can hold on here tonight, come in and get this win, I mean, the Big 12 South, yeah. you talk about a tough division now. Bob, there has been so much talk about the SEC, justifiably so, for their depth and their talent. But, you know, you look at what the Big 12 Conference is doing, North and South put together, it's given the SEC a run. Hey, they're winning me over. Yeah. I watched that game today, Oklahoma, Texas, as everyone did. The athletes on the field, the play of the quarterbacks, I don't see that happening in the SEC right now. The level of play by the quarterbacks and the offense. Agreed, the SEC defenses are dynamic, but it's hard to argue with the Big 12 right now. Now, well, let's go back to the T. Boone Pickens $160 million gift, but first, the call on the field. After review, call stands. First down. Oklahoma State ball. The T. Boone just had a little smile yeah. on his face can, right there. Can you call $160 million a gift? That, that's lifetime love well, for me. You can't call that a little <laughs> gift. I promise you that. But with the hedge fund struggling right now, you know, it's a tough time. But uh, what a win for Oklahoma State coming in here tonight. The Cowboys, barring a major Joe Pisarchuk moment here, will improve to 
six and zero overall and two and zero in conference play. And in the process, hand the Missouri Tigers its first loss of the season. Missouri will fall to five and one overall and one and one in conference play. But just from a credibility standpoint, I mean, let's call it like it is. Oklahoma State, they've beat Washington State, Houston, Missouri State, Troy, and AM, who's struggling. A lot of people thought this would be really the first test for Oklahoma State. Are they for real? They proved tonight they are for real. Yeah. The Oklahoma State defense especially bringing about maybe some more famous cowboy names to come in the future. There was Jesse James speaking of famous cowboys. The Lone Ranger. It was all about the mask. Roy Rogers. And John Wayne, cowboy. Headley Lamar. Who, who can forget Headley Lamar from Blazing Saddles? A Mel Brooks classic. I'll give you an amazing... Uh, how, how about Mike Gundy is a famous cowboy yeah, now? He's going to huh? be famous. He, he orchestrated famous this whole thing. Last year after the I'm a man 40 <laughs> thing. But how about Chase Daniel? 27 for 31 in the second half. But three of those were interceptions. So 30 of 31 times, somebody caught that ball. Yeah. 27 of them were Missouri guys, but 27 of 31 in the second half. He was pitching it tonight. Oklahoma State, 28, Mizzou, 23. And, you know, you can't really call this a trap game because Missouri knew what they were getting into with Oklahoma State coming in with those gaudy offensive numbers. We'd even asked head coach Gary Pinkle, hey, do, do you look, do you have a tendency to maybe cheat it a little bit with a big game next week against uh, Texas? And he's like, no, we're, we're just trying to get this one. And often coaches kind of spit that out as a cliche, but there was a high degree of sincerity in him saying that. You know, Oklahoma State's going to have a decision here. Which is? Obviously the 42nd. Second... Oklahoma State, their second and a half. They burn a timeout. Mike Gundy going to talk it over. Yeah. So third down, they're going to run a play. If that play takes 10 seconds, then this football game's over. Now, it's hard to have a play that takes 10 seconds. <laughs> Without running around, and that but becomes think, a little bit more dangerous. I think what you'll see is Zach Robinson take that football and scramble around and use up 10 seconds. Anytime you talk about punting the ball, there are a lot of things that can go wrong. And then you got Jeremy Macklin back yeah, there. I, I don't the think punts. you're not going to see Oklahoma State punt this football. Well, take us through the options then if you're looking at trying to burn 10 seconds so that it, in effect the game is over. It all comes down to having 40 seconds. They can burn off 40 seconds of the clock. So if they can take 10 seconds off this clock right now, basically the game's over. 13 seconds to be exact. But it takes some time for the officials to spot the football so the play doesn't have to take exactly 13 seconds. If it takes nine seconds or so, yeah. it's over. Those Cowboy players all wearing bracelets. It's your orange bracelets that are inscribed with Big 12 champs, December 6, 2008. That's their stated goal. Let's see when they mark this. Yeah, it's going to be about a 10 second difference. And this is a tough decision right here. With 10 seconds left, I don't have confidence that you can burn 10 seconds off by just taking your quarterback and running around. We've seen players run around and then run out of the back of the end. Yeah, zone. This is this is a tough call. This is a tough call right here. And it's going to go down to 10 seconds. You don't want to run around back there and get tackled and have Missouri take over at the 20 yard line exactly. or somewhere around exactly. there either. So if you're going to do that, you better have practiced and have tremendous confidence in something that's going to take 10 seconds. Now, how do you practice a play that's going to take 10 seconds? Because there's so many variables right now determined by what defense Missouri lines up in. So as a coach, 
I was gonna this ask is you. almost your worst nightmare right now as a coach because if something bad happens and you get tagged with that poor clock management tag, you never live that day. I was gonna ask you, do you have a uh, do you have a 10 second did you have a 10 second play in your book somewhere? Well, one thing you could do here, you can take a safety. But again, you're gonna take your quarterback and he's gonna turn and just run to the end zone. That should be pretty safe. But what happens if he slips and falls? What happens if he slips and falls before the 10 seconds goes off? A lot of crazy things happen. Now, he still could take a safety with the punter, but I doubt that he will do that because the punter's not as good athlete right. as the quarterback. He's not used to handling that ball a lot. Those but the advantage fun. is he's starting out that deep. So the odds of somebody getting to him before 10 seconds are low. Let's see what they do. Fodge is going to kick it. Oh, that was dangerous. Macklin from the 39. Three seconds to go, and this is going to be it. They might have to start lateraling the ball. There he throws it up. Still loose. Nope. Flag down. That might have been a forward lateral. I'll tell you what, that was close to being blocked. Tigers came after it, and he rolled Fudge did right into the pressure, right into the heat. I think you're going to need a legal forward pass by Missouri. The game probably is over. But man, that punt was dangerous right there. They got to practice that one on Monday, huh? Illegal, illegal forward, forward pass, pass, number six. That penalty is declined. Game's over. So the Oklahoma State Cowboys once again ride into Columbia, Missouri, Memorial Stadium, and come out with a victory. And for the sixth time in the last seven meetings between these two teams, the final verdict is seven points or fewer. And they are off to their first 6-0 start in school history. Check that, their third. Keep with it, keep with it. Great win for wow. Oklahoma State. Again, tremendous job by this Oklahoma State defense, playing just a great offensive football team in Missouri. Let's go down to Mike Gundy and Aaron Andrews. All right, Bob, thanks so much. Well, Coach, we came into this game talking about a shootout, but we talked mostly about the defenses tonight, particularly the pressure you guys were able to get on Chase Daniels. Why were you able to do that tonight? Well, our defensive staff had a great scheme, and our players just decided to come up here and lay it all the line, and nobody expected us to win this game except the people in that locker room. There's about 100 of us, players and coaches, and they mixed up the stunts, they mixed up the blitzes, they mixed up the coverages, and uh, that's as big a win as we've ever had. It, I mean, they're a tremendous football team, but our defense just decided to make the difference. They did it last week when we played A&M. They kept our offense in the game, and they did it again tonight. I'll ask you about the offense in a minute, but first, what was behind your decision?